mute. Hello everyone, McCall here, and with me are a significant number of people, uh, much more than the regular crew. Uh, you can see that I am attempting to run what most GMs would call taxing, and this is going to be a mess, and I'm going to, looking forward to it. I would like to introduce to you the crew of the Nighthawk and the crew of the Cerberus Station, the other game that I'm playing. So, without further ado, um, there is the prologue, which is going to deal with the dangling plot point of where I gave Command Lieutenant Commander Helsing determination at the very end of last session. Uh, so, I'd like to quickly pick that up and tie that off so we can get the crossover session underway. All right. Uh, scene opens. Helsing's in his room, uh, typing a, a letter to his sister. Hey, Kalen. Hope everything on the Orion's going good. Do you ever track down that gremlin in the EPS manifold you were chasing? Well, it's been interesting here, to say the least. Can't go into details, but I had my first real prime directive conflict. Just like the practical exercises they had us go through at the academy. Never thought it would really happen, you know? Just suffice to say, they suck. When you're there in the middle of one, when you're stuck not being able to help kids and old people trying to eke out a life, not just trying to eke out an existence in an urban miasma of poverty, just like we did after we fled Ceres and landed in that mining hell in Fiorina. The worst part is knowing that you could help and didn't. Couldn't help? Nah, nah, didn't help. On top of that, what do you know what the captain and I had to talk about duty not just two days earlier? It's almost like he knew something was going to happen. Maybe he saw the future when he was unconscious recently. Long story there, but anything's possible, I guess. All I know is I still have to try to help those people. Somehow. But it's going to have to wait a bit. Which kills me to just think about it. Talk to you later. Excellent. And now, uh, the uh, captain, you are in, or Captain Singral, you are currently in your captain's office, uh, working on the post Vitars report for Starfleet Intelligence. It is a fairly lengthy report, and you've been in there for several hours already. Where all of a sudden there is a knock at your or a chime at the door. Enter. And in walks. Hey, Captain, you have a minute. I need to talk to you about the Vitars living in that forest enclave. All right, well, by all means, take a seat. Uh, sir, it's just leaving those refugees there like we did, that's the hardest thing I had to do. I mean, I've always believed that the greater good balances on a knife's edge, but our talk we had a few days before we went to the forest, it really drove home my sense of duty first, especially over my personal feelings. And that's why I feel I needed to talk to you now. Well, I can most definitely understand why that's a conflict of interest. Don't get me wrong, like, being in Starfleet is not easy. And the Prime Directive is not always something that you have the... You could go in with the best of intentions, but you might not necessarily coming out feeling like you once were. But, but I mean, I think... we had a... I apologize, sir. No, continue. Permission but we had a... Really. We had a real opening when we were in that forest. Those people, they really needed our help. You know, being forced to live in that squalor. I mean, they were just thrown away by their own people because they weren't compatible with that cloning regeneration process. And at this point, you're sensing that this is really hitting home for Helsing. And he's, you're getting really strong emotions from him. Sense of abandonment. Struggle just trying to eke out a daily life. Not just for him, concern, maybe protection for somebody else, someone close. This almost feels like you're not we're not talking about you anymore. Or we're not talking about the we're not talking about the people on the Vatars moon, are we? And there's some similarities with situations. I've in seeing what it, I've had to deal with, I don't want them to go through it if I can help them at least try to offer something. I mean, it, but besides just those people who were abandoned, it's the entire Vitaris race if you get down to it. 
they're just throwing away people in throughout history. How many times has that actually led to something good happening? I mean, if you just look at Earth's own history and other things just in our own neighborhood of the galaxy, they've never led to anything good. I can see your point, Lieutenant. And don't get me wrong, it's easy. It's easy to take a blind eye and to forget to care. And it's even harder to take those feelings with you and still carry them. Even when you know you have to you have to do your best to try to be something else. No one said it was easy. No one said it was difficult. And I'm not gonna go tell you whether or not it was the right or the wrong. But I will tell you it was the most logical choice. And it's the choice that we had to make. It's not our mission and it's not our business. Well, to go play across being, the galaxy and to manipulate other cultures. Being being star intelligence. Seeing a situation that could potentially lead to something worse. Now take it a step up from just them throwing away their people. The digital alteration of the brain waves, why are they doing that? Are they doing that to make their the people more willing to accept being regenerated and controlled? Are they making the Vatars more warlike? Perhaps this is why they're so paranoid and and warlike, which could possibly threaten the entire sector now. I don't have a question to that. I don't have an answer to that question, Lieutenant. But I do th agree with you that it's in our best interest to find out. But you need to keep a cool head about this. It's the only way that we're going to be able to proceed accurately. Aye, uh, sir. But we do have some really strong options with that refugee group. They're just chomping at the bit to do something. And they're not the only... There's other people on the planet who know about it. We got the note slipped to us about them. So there's other people who know something's going on and aren't happy about it. And if I we think... get back to Starfleet and pass that on, our next mission could very easily be setting up a, you know, some type of resistance cell. So at that point, I'm actually going to look around the room just to make sure that the rest of my wall pictures are all in place. I'm going to actually, Captain Sangrel is going to rise from his chair. So computer, deactivate all listening devices in this room. Authorization Tengra Alpha 1. Complying. Well, I want us to be completely clear so we're on the same page. I haven't forgotten about those people. And clearly I realize that it's going to take some time for you to do it too. Now, I'm, this is not me saying that I agree or I authorize anything. You still need to make sure you keep General Order 1 in account. Aye, right, sir. But if you feel like you could do something to help these people, in the, in the smallest of ways that doesn't compromise our mission, present a plan, show it to me, and then we'll go from there. But I need Hi, you, sir. and I trust you, I need you to make sure you keep a cool head about this. I need to make sure that you can keep your objectivity. It's easy to lose yourself out here in space. I, and the, when we're talking about an entire, almost a mini star empire, the ramifications of anything we do with that definitely get amplified. So uh, anything we do has to be thought out and processed and approved. Agreed. I'll come up with some, sir. Well, I appreciate that. There are a lot of moving parts to this lieutenant, and there's even more that are about to arrive. So I need to make sure that we're on the same page. I need you at your best. Um, one I'm moment left. I'm with you, sir. All right, then. Well, computer, reactivate all listening devices. Complying. Well, Lieutenant, um, well, thank you for discussing this with me, and I think you have some work to do. Hi, sir. By your leave. By all means. You know where the door is. Sleeping, I'm on my way out. Very well. Okay. After mm -hmm. after he exits the room, 
I'd like to uh, make a private note in my log. Of course. Talking about the uh, increasing instability of Lieutenant Commander Halsey. Very well. <laughs> it is noted. And speaking of logs, we'll have a time jump of a couple days while uh, the USS Nighthawk makes a high warp travel to Cerberus Station. And I believe that the captain has the episode log. Oh, that I do. Captain's log started 82581.0. In an atypical maneuver, the Nighthawk has been ordered to proceed to Deep Space 15 at the direction of Director Chalmers. To my knowledge, this still Deep Space 15 is still unaware of our presence in the LaSalle Expanse. However, considering the rapid developments, it's probably in our best interest to finally convene. We do need our senses repaired, and the only starbase in the region will necessitate our arrival. Our diplomatic dealings with the Vitars will have an impact on Cerberus as well, and it's time to go compare notes. Begin personal log. I've become increasingly concerned, and I can no longer avoid the operational instability that this ship has acquired. Commander Bashir and I must have a frank discussion about the well-being and effectiveness of the crew, and I must meet Lieutenant Commander Helsing to review and revise security procedures since our time in the Expanse. The Imperium structure and technology requires modifications to establish protocols, and I intend to present them to Cerberus to assist in their implementation. End log. Very well. <clears throat> so we are going to cut to the Carceri Nebula. <clears throat> It is roughly three days at high warp from the Vitar's planet of, or the Vitar's homeworld of Vax, to the uh, station, no, uh, Deep Space 15, otherwise known as Cerberus Station. Uh, what you will see as uh, Lieutenant uh, Erkin Alak is the first person to see it on s the handout, which would be the Carceri Nebula. A massive gaping wound of stellar gas and sort of tortured phenomenon that is a pale reddish color that can be seen from most corners of the Lasai Expanse. Uh, for example, the Vatars call it the Blood Nebula, for obvious reasons. Um, Lieutenant Alak, as you enter the um, only one way in, one way out of the Carceri Nebula... <clears throat> Uh, a swirling vortex of gas, currents, and severe gravimetric shifts begin to buffet the ship in every direction. I would like you to make either a control plus con or, di or daring plus con with a difficulty of two, and the, st and the ship can assist with engines plus con. Okay, uh, helm operations is my focus. That works. Alright, I'll use daring plus con. Uh, also taking readouts from the, the nebulas, nothing's negatively affecting the ship, no bad particles, etc, etc. Fair enough. Okay. Assist so, from the ship, DM? Uh, yeah. Yes, please. Ship can assist. Uh, engines plus con. So, nothing from the ship, but thanks to uh, Lieutenant Erkin's fine flying, you get one momentum. Um, the the shifts are quite un are sorry despite the briefings that of the Carceri Nebula's uh, way uh, massive distortions and uh, shifting gravity waves. Um, this is nothing to you. It's like you you've sailed old clipper ships that have had far worse uh, times on bumpy seas than this. And it isn't long until you come out here. So, for the first time, um, you've read the reports, obviously, that there has been a Borg transwarp hub discovered in the middle of the... Um, bah, of the middle... the middle of the Carceri Nebula, but this is the first time you've seen it. Um, it is rough... the golden eye is roughly the size of the sun, but does not actually pr project any heat. Um, instead, it sort of sheds gravity, um, like a lizard sheds its skin. 
uh, roughly uh, one a or roughly one half AU away from it is Deep Space 15, colloquially known as Cerberus Station. Um, you have seen reports that they do have a support vessel, the USS Lunette, but you do not see it on sensors. Uh, continue our approach. Radio. Okay. I'll look back at the captain. I believe we're here, sir. Well, I suppose it's time for us to uh, get noticed. Hailing frequencies open. Open, sir. Yes, sir. USS Nighthawk. This is Acting Captain Bernie Jail of Starbase Deep Space 15. We are expecting your arrival. Please. And invite you aboard. Please follow the docking instructions of Lieutenant Darval. Received and acknowledged. Thank you. And the helm, the helm operator, or helm operator receives the um, necessary uh, inputs as well as uh, not only do you do that you also receive a full map of the stations uh, uh, ah, sensors of the uh, whole area revealing where the high pockets of gravity are and they're able to forewarn you of any potential uh, incoming massive gravity waves not that that's a challenge to you as you approach the docking bay a uh, pair of large or powerful tractor beams catch you and guide you in to the bay doors which open uh, to reveal the inside. Is the station, sorry, is the yep. station roughly to scale of what the image was? So it's uh, not the, the scale, uh, it's a scale uh, 10 sh uh, station. So it is uh, volumetrically, so it's not quite to scale of, as your token on there. So volumetrically, your ship would be able to fit into the docking bay with no real problem. It's designed to fit ships up to size or scale seven. I like um, mutters it, under his breast that it's a lot of star, a lot of starbase for such far away. Well, the expanse is uh, most definitely important to Starfleet's dealings in this region. We need a significant presence here. Understood, Captain. Just still slightly confused. Well, for the first time I could say you're not the only one. As you pull inside, you are receiving orders to, or receiving clearance to dock at Docking Bay 3. And your sensors detect two other Starfleet vessels in dock. Uh, one is the aforementioned USS Lunette, a Maelstrom class that is attached to the station permanently. The other ship is a Shran class vessel known as the USS Ushan. Uh, quick uh, couple taps on your computer console reveal it to be the flagship of Admiral Zier, who is the Admiral for the Remote Starbase Initiative program in this sector of space. She's pretty. Well, uh, Captain Sangrel just kind of looks, reads the reads the handout, sees the uh, sees the manifest, and just thinks to himself, "Well, here we go." All right. You pull into the docking bay. Um, there is the standard uh, or, um, depressurization and. Decom ah, decontamination of any oxygen just in case and eventually the crew be begins to depart um, this before is we yep. oh, sorry, before we complete our departure mm -hmm. I'd actually like to uh, tap my com badge and uh, if Commander Bashir isn't on the bridge then I'd like to contact him wherever he, uh, he may be ah good question where are you Bashir I'll be down in science but that's fair. Uh, Bashir, you... to... Bashir. Yes, Captain. Well, we have we have arrived at Deep Space 15. So, even though the ship has a bunch of sensitive elements on it, I'm not necessarily quite sure 
I like them all revealed to our hosts just yet. But for uh, your own personal interests, I'd like you to keep an eye on Togi. Absolutely. I think he'll enjoy seeing something new. All right, then. Well, that's all I wanted to let you know. Carry on. Okay. See you on board, Captain. Okay. Uh, so, it's not long until the senior staff exit onto the airlock. And you see it. Uh, in and around the hubbub of people coming and going. Um, at this point, the USS Nighthawk is receiving several new personnel to assist in its scouting duties aka more support characters for the future hooray um there's two other individuals who catch your attention uh the first is a late middle-aged uh, individual who captain singral immediately uh recognizes as, as a fellow betazoid a full betazoid i should say i believe and the other is a seven-foot-tall, hulking, mechanical thing that looks more like a robot than a, anything else. Well, Sengro will go ahead and uh, extend out his hands and say, Well, good afternoon, gentlemen. <clears throat> uh, uh probably immediately, like, probably before you even enter the airlock, I probably got a, uh, a tingling of, like, a familiar presence of a Betazoid, like, oh! And probably before you even entered, uh, I was probably standing in your general uh, direction, and Quox just kind of goes over, he'll give you a, a, a firm handshake. Uh, how you doing? It's, uh, I take it you're uh, Captain Sangral? Last time I checked, and that's, uh, that's what it said. A pleasure, a pleasure. This is a fine station here. And uh, just enjoying our accommodations and uh, the lovely company of our um, interesting uh, companion here. And I'll, he'll kind of nod over to uh, <laughs> the hulking robot, as he was described. <laughs> uh, just enjoying the uh, being a wall fixture here. Yes. My name is Lieutenant Commander Demos, Chief of Security of the station. Pleasure to meet all of you. Well, the pleasure is mine, Lieutenant Commander. But I have to admit, um, I've served in Starfleet Intelligence for quite some time, and I am traditionally, I think I'd like to think I'm staying on top of things, but I'm not familiar with your species. He's going to take three long steps towards you, just tower over you, and then kind of hunch down. And I kind of step. Helsing kind of starts stepping up towards in front of Sangral. <laughs> I'm an exo. Not uh, common in these parts of the woods, or most of this woods. I like him. Uh, gonna be interesting. <laughs> I think Commander. Maybe. I think you and I need to have a talk after this, Commander. Kind of share some notes. Sure, I can show you some things, give you some pointers if you're looking for something. Yeah, hopefully I can return the favor. Look forward to it. Oh, and before I forget, he points over his shoulder to this little floating ball, and it lights up as it gets closer. Greetings and salutations. My name is Midas. That's a hell of a party trick. Yeah. It's a little friend of mine. If he bothers you, just swat at him. He'll typically leave al leave alone, so... We get back in the pocket. Well, the Nighthawk isn't uh, a stranger to... Companions. Small <laughs> companions. But... As he says that, he wants to reach out and try to grab the ball. <laughs> Well, I'm here to escort you, I believe. So, mind following me? I'll lead the way. Okay. <clears throat> so, there's going to be a... Uh, he will escort you up to the conference room. Uh, is there anything you guys would wish to chat about before the 
meeting begins. Um, so Quark should probably be interested in, are we just talking, are we shooting the breeze? Are we talking about, um, you know, what's, what's going to happen, a mission? What are we, what would be the general atmosphere? Um, good question. Uh, sir, the sense that you're getting from the Nighthawk crew is that they don't know what is going to happen. Um, you get the sense from the folks that you have interacted with for your couple days on the station that there is something important going down, but no one has told you what, despite the fact that you're wearing the Starfleet Intelligence uniform. Okay. Well, Quarks would probably just uh, be very polite. Just There would probably be little pleasantries, of course, like, uh, you know, kind of uh, communicating with uh, the different crewmates because, you know, uh, of the Nighthawk and trying to get a feel for it because they're not sure why they're here, which probably makes him very not sure why he's here as well. Uh and very unnerving, so he'll probably sit there kind of awkwardly silent. Okay. Uh, Thashran, anything you want to bring up? I'm inspecting the uh, the, the pieces of the uh, station that I can see while um, slowly moonwalking in place for anyone paying attention. Hmm. So you're moonwalking as everyone is walking towards the uh, turbo lifts. Yeah, I gotta get in practice somehow. That makes He's sense. Training for the big event. Do a little spin every third step. Fair enough. It's how I, I, I sneakily uh, inspect things while drawing attention. Uh, surprisingly, um, as you wander through the boulevard, which is the station's main hub of commercial activity. Yeah, oddly enough, a um, Andorian doing the moonwalk is liter is not the most oddest thing, as there is currently a three-way argument going on between the bartender, um, one of the Romulans, and the female Klingon bodyguard. Sadly, oh. this is not the first time that those arguments have occurred over the last few if, days. If Midas sees that, he's just going to shout like, hey, and he's going to point at them all. I'll be back. As he keeps walking with them. Midas is quick to report to you the lewd gesture that the Klingon female um, duh, points at your back. Um, at which point she and the Romulan um, leave um, arm in arm, surprisingly enough. Yeah. Uh, Commander Bashir, anything that you're doing? Nope, just walked, looking around uh, before going through uh, examining the promenade, the courtyard, and okay. just kind of looking at. Very well. Uh, I was uh, gonna say, hey, McCall. Yes. Uh, quick question here: Did you have a way to introduce me, or I can do. I jump in here? I have a plan. You are uh, the rest of everyone else is waiting at the conference room. Very good. I will not butt in then. All right. Um, Lieutenant uh, Erkin. Uh, any Bajorans present and or sites like uh, uh, shrines or temples or anything? Uh, there are Bajorans present. Um, by this point, Bajor is a full member of the Federation. So there are several Bajorans in Starfleet. So it's not an uncommon sight to see a few. Um, there, If you stopped to inquire, yes, there is a small shrine. Um, it is It is off the main boulevard as the attempt, as primarily because they wish the uh, primary uh, section of interaction to be as uh, a religious as possible. But yeah, you are, you are more than happily shown a place of worship. I will make note of it for after our conference, but I shan't hold up anyone else. Very well. Uh, Helsing? Just kind of staring back at Romulans? Hey, Captain, did you catch the Romulans on the main boulevard? I did indeed. They have an, an embassy on board here as well? Multiple oh. factions have an embassy on the station. Interesting. Sorry for eavesdropping, but you're not being subtle. 
humanity. No worries. How many people live on this station? Personal wise, quite a few. Civilian wise, even more. We got a mixture of uh, traders, offloaders, workers. As a number, well, uh, where is she? Rami, what's the current number and population of this station? At this point, appearing in lockstep to all of you, as if she had not skipped a beat, is a holographic woman. Um, I had her token, and I went away. There she is. That's something you don't see every day. Uh, she appears right beside Demos, walking in lockstep. There are currently 6,212 Starfleet personnel on board this station. A civilian... Uh, civilian population of 8,212. At the, at the note of the, the population of the station, at least in uh, Sengal's, he starts to actually change his emotional state and he gets a little bit more concerned. He doesn't vocalize it, and uh, the, the appearance on his face maintains the same. You know, just one of I'm sternness, I'm ready to get to the conference room, but... Mm -hmm. He's, uh, I'm concerned about the nature of all these civilians within the Expanse, especially with the night, with what the Nighthawk has encountered. Uh, Alec will do everything like that as well, except not hide it from his face. Very well. Ah! Rami quickly turns and, s and says, Greetings. I have not formally introduced myself. I am Rami, the avatar of the ship's computer interface system. Should you need anything, you may just call computer, as you would on your regular vessel, or address me by name. Until then, I bid you good day. And with that, she will poof away. And it is roughly this time that you guys will exit the turbo lift, have a quick jaunt across ops, and end up in the conference room. Just before we go into the conference room, yep. I'm going to stop the group. Like, Just so you're aware, the Admiral Zero is here. Uh, there's been some interesting goings on, so whatever information you have about the station may be out of date. Just don't want you to be surprised, so. And now hit the door panel to open the door and walk on in. Okay. Into the conference room we go, which is a fairly sizable, or a fairly cramped ordeal, I should say. All that's missing is this person. All this space, but the conference room is smaller than what's on the Nighthawk, huh? <clears throat> Standing in the corner at uh, rapt attention is an Andorian female um, that you have already figured out is Admiral Zier. Uh, sitting down at the quote-unquote head of the table is the familiar face of Director Chalmers. Uh, there are... Uh, two other individuals here from the Cerberus crew. Uh, your intelligence uh, recognizes its chief engineer as Lieutenant Yamato, and an individual who you don't quite recognize either her species or her name. And at this point, uh, let's introduce Commander Area. So, small disclaimer here, I'm not in a height competition with uh, Demos. This was something I decided originally. Um, so Demos is, uh, or sorry, Area is a Serato Draco, which, if you're not familiar, is a holdover species from when I ran the Arcadia games. Uh, long story short there, just basically imagine a very large, tall, well-built well -built humanoid um, with impressive horns, sort of a head crest of scales, and then scaling throughout along the hands, legs, arms, etc., and uh, also a very interesting tale, uh, not prehensile, in case anyone was wondering. Uh, specific specifically for the commander, uh, she has ice blue hair, uh, starkingly almost glowing unnatural yellow eyes. Might be artificial. Uh, she also has a dark blue scaling that sort of contrasts with her uh, umber skin. And uh, she just sort of looks at all of you with a recognition that suggests that she knows who you are, but isn't going to say anything about it. Okay. And the other individual would be Lieutenant Yamato, if you could please introduce yourself. Okay. Um, Lieutenant Larce Yamato is... She's a human about 
five foot six, I think. I think was what I put her height. And she's fairly slender, and uh, she somewhat resembles. Uh, she has she has enough features to that those of you with historical knowledge will mention will notice possible a, a distant family resemblance with Hoshi Sato from the NX01 from the NX01. Cool. Right. So, as soon as you all enter the room, uh, sit down. Director Chalm, or Director Chalmers opens his mouth to speak, but is immediately interrupted by Admiral Zier. Uh, Director Chalmers looks quite chuffed at this. Captain Sengral, this I, the, I should have been kept informed of that there was another Starfleet vessel operating in the Lasai Expanse from the day you were dispatched. I did not find out about your interference or exploration, as Chalmers here would say. That's Director Chalmers to you. Shut up. That Director Chalmers mentioned. Now, I'm going to make this perfectly clear, Mr. Captain Sengral. While you continue to operate within the this sector of space, you fall under my authority. You can do your Starfleet intelligence sniffing around if you'd like. And quite frankly, based on what little I've learned about the Vitaris, I think it might actually have merit. She sort of sounds a little defeated in her, or sort of frustrated in her tone of delivery. And quite frankly, this isn't my operation or my idea. Anyways, welcome to the Expanse. Well, thank you, Admiral. And by all means, I apologize that you were kept out of the loop. With everything that's gone on, it wasn't necessarily something that came across my purview, and I was unaware that you were uninformed. So I look at Director Chalmers, and I kind of just give him a, like a, like a, a little eyebrows raise and a nod, and I just say, well, I apologize, and it certainly won't happen again. Yeah. However, my first duty, and the Nighthawk's duty, is still primary to up, primarily to uphold Federation values. Even though we are Starfleet Intelligence, we are still explorers. So I hope the data that you've received, and if you've gotten a chance to go, go over it, has now been of some use. She nods, uh, despite, and her steely expression does not change. Director Chalmers, this is your show. Much as I'm loath to um, acquiesce the floor. I have a station to run and a hearing to complete. And she is, and she makes a move to head out of the conference room. Uh, Emo just kind of tilts his head and winds his eyes a little bit as she says the, about the hearing. He's like, "Yep." Coox is just kind of, he's stationed next to the captain, so he's just going to s s just kind of uh, nonchalantly lean over and say, she's much more charming in person, not in a briefing room, I swear. I'm gonna have but to very low. <laughs> I'm going to have to take your word for it. So I, uh, after that, I Sengro was going to pipe across the room to Director Chalmers. I mean, did you, did you tell her about the first day? Did you tell her about the refugees? Uh, he... He shrugs. That was that happened in, well outside her purview, Captain. However, they are doing quite well. Well, that's good to hear. Anyways, ladies, gentlemen, floaty machine thing. To business. Uh, he pulls up a map of the um, uh, Lasaic, or he pulls up a map of the Federation space. So there's the United Federation of Planets. Uh, encircled by several of the other powers of the galaxy. Right. The Typhon Pact has been a thorn in Starfleet's side for the last 30 years. Current members are the Romulans, the Breen, the Zinkethi, the Breen, and the Gorn, depending on who their leader is at the time. It used to be the Kinshea, then the Klingons wiped the floor, the galaxy's floor with them. 
Say what you will about the Klingons, they do efficient work when they decide to pull their weapons on something. Anyways. Starfleet Intelligence, with the assistance of some Breen allies that we have recently uh, turned, has found a plot to do something with the Transwarp Hub. Not entirely sure what. And they only get, we were only able to get coordinates for a planet nearby... Uh, which is apparently, apparently, and he looks to the um, those of you from Cerberus Station that you go, folks have actually encountered before. They're called the Iban, Ibani, the Ibane. And then he read, "Oh right, two of you are brand new." The captain and commander. Well, we'll see if they're still sticking around after Zier's done poking them with her bladed weapon. Captain, Commander, your orders are to in take the sh take the Lunette and the Nighthawk to their these coordinates, investigate what's there, and convince the whoever you find to go home. And quite frankly, if you're if you have to send bits of their ship home with uh, some reassembly instructions, I don't really care. I don't think the Admiral would appreciate that. I don't give a damn what the Admiral says. What? Uh, shortly after the refugees, and he gives you a comical wink, some, someone, somehow they, somehow some Tholians broke deep into Federation lines and destroyed Starbase 212. We're not sure how. We're hoping that you might be able to find some information from these Breen or these whoever else is out here that might be able to shed some light on the attack. Starfleet Intelligence is very concerned that they've somehow found a way into the Transwarp hub. Or worse, building their own. Was Starbase 212 occupied? Yes. It was... Thankfully, it was only a listening... It was primarily a listening post into the Breen and Zinkethi space, but we still lost 1,200 good men and women and other non-gendered species. So, if that's the case, and this planet happens to be so close, why actually order us to the station itself? He shrugs. It's about... Quite frankly, that was not my idea. My idea was to dispatch you directly. This is Admiral, Des Admiral Zier's power play. Ah, uh, I see. Well, yes. I'll do my job this, this despite the politics. You fight your arena and I'll fight mine. I appreciate that. Questions? Uh, Alec puts up his hand sort of timid timidly. Yes, what but... What hearing that Admiral... Yes, Bajoran with the graying here. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, what hearing is Admiral Zier going to? There has been, let's say, a disruption in the command situation on board this station. Admiral Zier has taken command until s such time as she and the Judge Advocate General's group have investigated the matter fully. So you're taking this time while she's distracted to send out a strike force? Quite frankly, I don't have my own... I'm not fa uh, fancy enough to have my own quantum slipstream drive-enabled ship to get out here on such short notice. So, she plays her politics, I play mine, and pray that, at the end of the day, the Federation is all the stronger for it. So, Sangrel's gonna pipe up again. How long has Cerberus been able to monitor... Uh this planet. Do we have any accurate long-range sensor readings of this location? We have some. Uh, he'll pull up a chart, and at this point, if any of you guys actually have the uh, Lasai map saved to your drives, now might be a good time to pull it up. Because one of these days, I'll find a way to upload it to the stream without it losing fidelity. Um, so, the Lasai... So the planet in question is Iban, which happens to actually be in the same sector of space as the Carceri Nebula. So it's only a 
two, it's only a day's travel at max warp away. And since the first contact, um, roughly a month ago, while there has been no direct communication with the planet, um, you have been, or the Cerberus station, and I'm assuming Commander Area has knows a bit about this situation already. Um, there has been passive monitoring of the system. Um, roughly uh, f a week ago or so, a lot of their, let's say, casual ba casual transmissions uh, ceased. Um, so a lot of their military stuff, stuff that uses um, encrypted frequencies or powerful transmissions were able to make it through, but just the casual bleed off that happens with any civilization's uh, radio signals uh, came to a stop. Um, next question, uh, Commander Area, um, mm -hmm. if I'm accurate, you are in your, are you wearing the, or, yeah, are you wearing a Starfleet Intelligence uniform or your uh, Cerberus Station uniform? Oh, no, I am pulling a Garrick, and until I tell anyone otherwise, I am just a simple chief medical officer. Duly noted. Yeah, uh, so Chalmers says... <clears throat> Chalmers just reports pretty much what I just said in gruffer and more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Gruff tones. So, okay. Well, in that case, uh, I assume that the crew of Cerberus will take the Vinette class and the crew of the Nighthawk will definitely just be there as the main supporting ship and we'll just go investigate you is know, this going to be before or after we have repairs done sir well the repairs should already be underway i'd hope so we're not going to leave and investigate the situation until our senses are repaired uh real That's quick right, we're call. yes oh, sorry go ahead well okay i'll go um uh, so with the uh, two people not here, the the captain and the commander of the station, mm -hmm. is Area technically in command when the admiral's not? Ah, no. Just in roughly that nick of time, the duly represented second in command of the station struts in with a cup of coffee. Acting Captain Commander J Bernie Jail reporting, sir. I'm looking forward to taking the lunette out and smashing some brain visors, sir. Well, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but hopefully that won't be necessary. Uh, How are question. The oh, okay. Hey. Yes, uh, Does he robot. say that with the door? No, no, I don't care. Does he say that with the door open? Uh, just as it closes. Hey. Well, I'm going to ask how the repairs to the Nighthark are actually proceeding, and if they'll be ready before we depart. That would be a question for the chief engineer. That would be uh, Lieutenant Yamato. Right. Um, do I need to make any checks for that? Mm. Um, there are two things that probably should be addressed. One is, yeah, that would be an insight engineering. And the second question is, how much free reign of Cerberus personnel are you guys letting into your engineering room and your various ship systems i'll let them in bobby keeping a very careful eye on them okay so what what was the uh, check again you said insight, engineering but... insight engineering with a difficult or sorry reason engineering with a difficulty of one okay reason engineering uh, as he does that, I have a question. Of um, I'm guessing this means that the Nighthawk has breaches. Yes. Uh, tech. They took a breach to their sensors opera their sensor system. Um, they've repaired, or they did the work to work around it. But there is still their sensors are op are operating only at a roughly eighty five percent instead of hundred. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, the reason I ask what? is because for Yamato, it might be easier to do a presence engineering. Mm -hmm. um, page 96 of command. Um, I 
obviously I don't know Yamato, but it might be something to consider. Okay. I've only got seven presents, so well, reason is at eleven. All right. Uh, so focuses. I have computers, warp core mechanics, experimental technology, starship recognition, starship power systems, extravehicular operations. If you had something like crew management or team management or starship repair, something like that would work. Otherwise, you'll just have to roll straight. Ah. Okay. Okay, there's one extra momentum. Uh, so due to the... Uh, you you received the Nighthawks uh, technical specifications before it arrived, so your team was ready to go once the ship uh, powered down properly. Um, however, their sensors are delicate things, and there's a lot of them. So it's going to require roughly a full day's worth of work to bring them up to full fidelity. Okay. Um, repairs are are going well. We we have the uh, we started getting to work as I, my team started getting to work as soon as you as you your ship finished powering down. But it'll take us about a day to get them fully fully repaired. I understand that our internal systems are difficult so I appreciate your assistance if you need any additional help from our engineer I'm sure that they will be happy to give it in the most delicate of ways I'm just make sure no one touches my, my uh, disco ball functionality and just... <laughs> she, raises, she raises an eyebrow at the disco ball and just says alright thank you if you can you know, move every disco ball if you can move every disco ball, we might be able to talk something after this. Oh no, I I, I feel like I be, I better supervise at this point then. Okay, boys, boys, remember we're here for a reason. Stay on task. Fair enough. Director Chalmers just sort of sighs at the one day delay and just stands up and says, All "Right, sort it out." Uh, if you need me, I'll be down in the intel. I'll be down in the admiral's uh, CNC area. Someone has to keep an eye on those Romulans. You don't have to worry about them. My people can handle it. Uh, Commander Demos, you you had mentioned there were multiple embassies on board the station. Yes, multiple any personnel from, from any from the Typhon Pact. Besides the Romulans? Yes, one. An individual. Augment human as well. Interesting individual. He's a liaison, an attaché, or an ambassador. I'm not sure of his title, but he speaks on their behalf. For the whole Typhon Pact? No, for the Brain Confederacy. Okay. I look at uh, Kevin Sengrell and Director Chalmers. Any chance this individual has any idea of this operation? As of right now, the only people that have idea of this operation are either in the midst of a hearing or in this room. If you want to try and find out what he knows, fine. Just do it quietly. Because if you tell him and he doesn't know, then guess what? He now knows. Well, my crew doesn't have a problem with uh, being discreet. And I say that with a stern voice, looking at Helsing, making sure he can continue to maintain my trust after our talk a few days ago. Afterwards, um, I'd like to actually tap my pad, and if time would allow it, uh, I'd like to have a, meet, a small impromptu session with Director Chalmers after this meeting is at his earliest convenience. Okay. Um, yeah, so you guys have decided to spend a day on the station. So you're not leaving immediately. Um, if you guys have any quick scenes you'd like to do wherever, uh, now would be a good time. Uh, we can start with Sengral and Chalmers, and the rest of you can come up with ideas if you'd like. If other people have scenes that they want to play out, then I have no problem going last. 
I mean, I've got a scene. I don't know if it's quick. I swear, McCall, this is not a derailing one, I hope. <laughs> that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's that's all right. Uh, so quick question. Yes. Um, who's wearing medical colors on the Nighthawk crew? That would be Lieutenant Coox. Coox. He's, he's actually been on station for the last couple of days. Uh, he okay. arrived with the uh, Ushan for personal transfer. Got it. In that case, uh, once the meeting starts breaking up, Commander Area will rise to her full nine feet. No, I don't know how she was hiding it this entire time, but rises to her full height, taps her combat and says, uh, Lieutenant Commander Kawax, uh, if you would be so kind to meet me in the chief medical officer's office, and uh, if you could find one Mr. Jensen on your way, that would be lovely. Uh, okay, sure, he'll tap back. Of course, um, let's see, I think I remember where that was, down the hall, and do we know where Jensen was? I'm sure Rami can assist you in this matter. Okay, um, this is new. Rami, where is Jensen? Let's see. Uh, uh, ah, uh, Michael Jensen is currently in the space that is designated as the Breen Embassy. Oh. Uh, can you give me an indication as to where that is? I need to go pick him up. I could summon him if you'd like. Oh, that would be much easier. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, probably tap for Jensen to join me uh, at the medical. Okay. That's uh, what... So question one, is Jensen going to go? No. Okay. Uh, you guys are in sick bay, or the infirmary, I should say. Let's see. Gone. Oh. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Rip. Paste. Ooh. This is a nice map. It is a nice map. Not not Very my nice. creation, but it was done by Falk. Yes. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Chief medical officer in the infirmary of a massive station quite roomy actually uh you guys are waiting around roughly 10 minutes before rami pops back up i'm sorry he has made no indication that he wishes to attend ah i see uh, rami could you put a channel directly with him please absolutely establishing um establishing communication into the breen, Con breen confederacy embassy Hello, Mr. Jensen. Uh, my name is Commander Area, and I unfortunately have to call you in for a brief physical. I would rather not make it in order, but it is my duty as the chief medical officer, well, the new one anyway, to ensure that all visitors and representatives of other species are at their best. He's just going to lean in very close to the microphone so it sounds loud. I'm not going to do that, but he does. It's like, diplomatic immunity, no. If you would prefer, we could come to you. If you sound as nice, you look as nice as you sound, come alone. Other than that, no. <clears throat> Jensen, mm. it will just be the medical officers on the station. I'm just here to observe. There's no extra pressure, trust me. I'm as nice as I, I can trust you. You can trust me that I'm not going to bite. So before Jensen says, I think for a moment, I say, ah, I believe my predecessor left me notes on this matter, Mr. Jensen. I will bring along a punching bag for you. I'm going to form a formal complaint with the brain confederacy that this is being done in protest. And I will make it very difficult for you to attempt. That's very fine. I just have to run a few scans. Uh-huh. Okay. Onward to the Breen Confederacy office, which I never did find a good set piece for. So here we are at the Imagination Station. Probably the entire time we're walking, Kowax is just looking at area, both with intrigue and just mild amusement. At, apparently we're going to give someone an examination that really doesn't want us to. So I think at some point on our walk, I would uh, lean down a little bit and say, uh, Mr. Coox, it is important for me to tell you that I will be doing uh, a little bit more than the usual scan, if you will. Uh, I need you to be a sufficient distraction. And in Mr. Jensen's case, I believe that means um, 
being a punching bag. I was being quite literal. Oh, and his his mood immediately changes. One from just happy and and gassed to be here to, oh, he looks down. I'm not the best punching bag. Oh I well, to I mean, if you heavily. would prefer to run the scans, I could certainly do the punching bag myself. Oh my. Uh, well, what in your opinion, you, you're running the show here, whichever you think is better for the patient. Um, I'm just a little, well, uh, <laughs> I don't do so well when punched. I pull out a tricorder, I hand it to you, and if you open it up, the first thing that starts displaying is a Starfleet Intelligence uh, logo, so that you know this is an Intelligence tricorder. But the logo's there for maybe a split second before it goes back to being Starfleet Medical. And uh, oh, Ariel yes. winks and says, you simply need run only a program Theta Alpha SETI for the scan to complete. In the process, um, just make sure that you're pretending you're doing a physical. Theta Seta Sedma? Theta Alpha SETI. Theta, theta Alpha SETI. Uh, of course. Oh, you know, and just, oh, right, right, right. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, yeah, this will be a simple medical procedure. Not, not a problem. Uh, I just sort of smile warmly and we continue on. Very well. Uh, you'd send down to uh, deck, I believe it's deck 74, which is the embassy deck. Uh, you, run, you wander past the um, Klingon embassy, that, and it sounds like one of their many days of uh, ritualistic drinking and headbutting. Oh there. My. There is the Romulan Embassy, which is currently closed at the moment. Just saying, with a sign saying, if needed, please chime the ambassador. Uh, down near the um, far end of the hallway that is kept f isolated. And behind um, several uh, individually um, activatable force fields, if necessary, is the um, embassy that is marked for the Breen Confederacy. Um, I believe that it hasn't really been tailored at all. It is a fairly stark, um, fairly stark series of rooms. There is a desk with a chair. Um, in the back would have been a meetings room, which I have, sus which I suspect Michael Jensen has long since destroyed or cleared out. It's very Spartan. The only uh, there's only one terminal that's ever been activated. Yeah. You walk in and. Michael Jensen is, well, you can describe Michael Jensen. He's in his full brain garb. Ah, he's in he's in his brain form. Full armor. Yep. Yep. With the uh, translator and everything, so we can't see your facial expressions. Yep. Okay. It also makes it very hard to scan through. <laughs> there is that too. It's a good thing we're not here for him. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, uh, we walk in. I, uh, of course, nod appreciatively at Mr. Jensen, and I say, uh, Mr. Jensen, uh, small change of plans. My colleague here will be running the uh, brief medical scan. Again, we would want to make sure that your stay here is comfortable and hopefully give you something a bit more, I look around and motion at the, uh, the embassy, something a bit more to... Uh, the Breen's liking. Uh, in the meantime, I believe that uh, you are fond of sparring, is that correct? Get your scans over with and get out. I was hoping for a little bit more rapport than that, but if you wish. <laughs> okay, immediately start scanning, I guess, then. Okay. Now. now, if I recall correctly, uh, Commander Area has the multidiscipline talent, correct? Yeah. Yep. So, um, because to my knowledge, intelligence officer doesn't have a specific function list or bonus thing listed in the rules, I am. It treating... does. Oh, it does. Ah, I must have mm -hmm. missed that. My apologies. Good. I can for free during a mission. I can create an advantage without having to spend the momentum. Excellent. Cool. Never mind. But I mean, if you want to give me bonuses on top of that, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> Uh, we'll see how we'll see how the uh, nine foot tall dino girl uh, does before I give her any further bonuses. Um, anyways, sure. so you uh, Kova is the one waving around the tricorder, but because it was Commander Area who was 
let's say programming it uh what is it you uh, the the tricorder is actually doing um it is using the latest in starfleet intelligence uh code breaking things to get whatever it can from the uh segmented computer array that services the bream and embassy okay. the goal behind this is to see if there's obviously anything that jensen or the Breen confederacy would know uh about the upcoming operation um i was gonna flavor it as probably a daring security or a daring science yep. um but i'm open to suggestions i would think that a daring plus security would work rather well here um if you have anything like hacking or i have infiltration that would probably be sufficient in this case um i would call this a difficulty of three very well. Uh, I would like to spend. Uh, let's do one threat and two momentum. Okie dokie. Because this is very important. And then, can I be assisting as I'm the one that's waving it, pretending that I'm scanning our uh, lovely Jensen? Mm, no, not really. Um, if any, if this was an NPC, I'd have you roll uh, whatever Star Trek Adventures equivalent of a bluff check is. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Survey says four successes, so we get one of those momentum right back. Okay. Um, your tricorder makes, the, or while Coox is waving the tricorder around, it makes all the fun sounds that a medical tricorder does uh, for roughly 45 seconds. Then it makes a ping sound and displays a message clear as anyone could see. Uh, Biolog or uh, bio readings recorded. So I motion for the tricorder. Uh, do you hand it over? Of course. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Check out the readings. Thank you. I look at the readings, sort of furrow my brow a little bit, and I say, uh, Mr. Jensen, you do appear to be in moderately good health. However, I am noticing that your neuropeptide levels are dangerously low, especially for a human augment. You may wish to see me about this in the future. Duly noted, thank you. Very good. Apologies for the interruption. And we see ourselves out. All right. So now the question is, after we've left Jensen behind and we're headed back to sick bay, did we get anything? Uh, okay, so uh, a quick perusal. Uh, there are several messages back and forth to the Breen Confederacy. Um, most of them were encrypted. Um, your code breaking, um, thanks to recent gains with Starfleet intelligence within the Breen Confederacy, uh, you have maybe not the most recent de de uh, cipher, but you have one that's fairly recent, up until two or three weeks back. Everything seems pretty normal. Uh, Michael Jensen has a lot to say about the station and its uh, senior staff. Most of it is not nice. Or... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Describing them all as inferior individuals who would not put up a, who would so, who would almost put up a decent fight. Almost. Except the captain. He goes down like a sack of potatoes. Every time. It's hilarious. And there's actual gif of him being punched, or sucker punched in the gut by, uh, Master Chief Ember on more than one occasion. He'd actually have respectful things to say about Ember. Yes. Um, there was the comments that, you know, should we invade, uh, his recommendation would be to kill Master Chief Ember before she put up a fight. But nah, noted, but that statement is a couple weeks old and now out of date. Uh, surprisingly, there hasn't been much in the way of official communications beyond the status update, all situation normal, uploading recent data, or re uploading recent Transwarp hub related data and information. Uh, that's about the last five days or so. Okay. So I turn to uh, Coox and I say, oh, Mr. Coox, if you haven't figured out already, I lead a double life, one I prefer to keep under wraps, so I trust your discretion in this matter. However, I do have a task for you. Oh, I'm quite amused. Please tell me. 
Oh, it's a very simple task. I simply wish for you to tell your captain and whoever you deem appropriate that the at least the Breen Confederacy side of the Typhon Pact has no knowledge of the upcoming operation. I'm sure I can do that. I haven't lasted this long without being able to uh, tell discreetly certain pieces of information. I'm greatly amused by your antics. That was uh, the neuropeptide uh, treatment was very uh, effective. Oh, I wasn't lying. He actually has a neuropeptide imbalance, and I show him the tricorder. Oh, well played. I didn't catch that during the initial scan. Yes, it's a common thing with human augments. They, some of them, uh, have aggression issues. Others uh, display that genetic flaw in other ways. His is a neuropeptide. It's nothing major. It's just something I could throw back at him. Mm, very good. I, I, I'm kind of uh, saddened that we didn't get to see the punching bag treatment. Um, I'm just glad I wasn't the punching bag. Maybe oh, next indeed. time. Uh, you would have much likely needed immediate medical assistance. Yeah. And I give him a wink, and uh, I sort of wander off in a different direction, leaving him to his own devices and ending the scene. There's... <laughs> he, the scene probably ends with me with his mouth open going... Wah! Okay, um, next up. So, that is what Coox was doing. Let's go down the Discord list of Nighthawk folks. Cap, uh, Captain Sangral will do that last. Next up is uh, Cap or Commander Bashir. Anything you wish to do? Um, I'm good. Uh, I wouldn't mind, like, you know, going around the uh, 10 forward, but no real scenes. Fair enough. Um... It's actually called the, uh, it's called the Eclipse. It's mostly blue and a futuristic nightclub. It's rather, um, nice. There's a Bolian bartender who smiles and waves at you. Uh, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Commander Helsing. Um, I sir, we have time. I'd like to get with, uh, Lieutenant Commander Demos. Okay, well, if we have a little bit of time. Let's see what you and Demos have. Where would you like to meet? Um, his office, security office. Sure, we can do that. Security office. Okay, uh, feel free to start the scene, and I will put tokens in place ASAP. Okay. Um, Demos, you are in your office doing security office things. Uh, it's still picking up the pieces uh there's a lot of confusion and people adapting to your way of of uh leading a security team instead of master chief embers however you think they are for the most part ready willing and able to accept you as a commander and in walks the uh, lieutenant commander helsing I'm on the wrong layer. That's why you can't see any of this. There we go. I'm just that good of an intelligence operative. Totally. Ghost. Uh, his his office is just a multitude of screens, a lot of live feeds on public areas, um, and a few screens feeding information from different sectors. Um, different prioritization as well. Alerts pop up showing him he needs to look at either right away or just not a major concern. Yeah. Lieutenant Commander? Lieutenant uh, Commander, it's uh, quite a setup you have there. AI controlling the um, the alerts and the pop-ups? No, it's actually, he's going to tap the back of his head, he's like, neural implant. You know, kind uh... of. I'm actually reading them while we're talking, and then I'm just cycling through them. So that... Is handy. To a degree. Well, operation we got going through a lot of information at one time. Something like that could be useful. I might have to borrow the idea. Well, if you want something stuck in your brain, sure. For me, it's just an accessory. Well, we might be able to come up with something a little bit different for our uh, uh, data analyst after that by the captain. But, yep, go ahead. 
I was just gonna say, it also helps to be able to think fast too. Quantum processing and all that. And what brings you in? Well, just, you know, the traditional walking, you know, coming on board and kind of sharing notes on what we've come across, what y'all have come across. Maybe come share something new with each other. Seems like you have just taken over. Yeah, the uh, last chief uh, unfortunately had a, um, well, what's been best described as a breakdown. Oh, man, she was yeah. famous. Yeah, it's a station this size, dealing with this many population, it's stressful. So. Yeah, I did an early tour on one a while back, so, yeah, understand that. Yeah, this is actually nothing for me. I used to do more. Oh, really? Yeah, about 10,000. Man, yeah, when I was on, wasn't even this big. Oh, it was fun times while it lasted. <laughs> it is de definitely different. But doing the Starship bits got its perks. Scenery changes all the time, so that's always good. It actually was a starship. Oh, really? 10,000 on one starship? Yeah, we called them city ships. Holy cow. Uh, they uh, were designed to seed solar systems as they went through, start new colonies. Each section of the ship was able to detach and build a new life. And it was a fun, fun time. Wow. Wow. And how long have you been with Starfleet? Uh, well, after they found me, four years. Found you? You were a... Yeah. You don't know about the Exos. That's no. a whole. That's a whole other story. Um, quick end. I'm not from here. I'm here to help out, though, and Starfleet has seen my talents. And, uh... A lot of us that have decided to join, well, those that did, have been fast-tracked because of our previous experiences. Um, yeah, I don't want to bore you, and uh, there's a lot to do on this station, so I don't have much downtime while I'm picking up the pieces. I'm removing about 50 terabytes worth of algorithm and install codes just for this office alone that Ember had set up. <laughs> oh my god. There's, there's a lot of precautions in here, and I get what she wanted. I understand that completely, but I need to be able to do it my way. And unfortunately, it's taking some time. So I'm patching everything around it for now. So if you want information you... of what we've gone through, give me one second. He's going to grab a pad, and he's going to hold it for a second and transfer everything they've come across. It's not classified or deemed classified by Starfleet. He's going to hand it to him. Thing. We got some initial from some of the initial contacts y'all had with the Vitaris and the Togolo, Togolau, Togolau. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty much about it. Yeah, it's been interesting. I'm still trying to catch up with all of this, but it was a bit of a catalog to go through. Now, have you had any problems with the embassy? personnel oh from one of the reports a romulan that wasn't actually a romulan tried to blow up a bomb and it was diffused by actually uh the brain ambassador uh oh, really? almost, yeah he almost died to it too from what i understand it took a heavy blast from it it did have hmm. uh fail safe detonators to go off so, would have been a large hole exposed to vacuum Wow. But, uh, turns out, from what I know, that was a Vulcan disguised as a rump. I'm, as I said, I'm still going through the reports. Some of my clearance hasn't been transferred over yet, so some files are just hard locked. Uh, understand. Well, if there's anything I can do while we're here, just let me and my team know we can, we're willing to help out. Yeah, I got one thing. Yeah, shoot. I don't. 
I don't like ghost ships kicking around. I don't like the fact that you guys are going to be around doing things under the record, off the books, all that. As long as you guys are here, I want you to keep your mind steady on one thought. There are 8,000 civilians here. Whatever you do up there affects them, and whatever yep. we do affects them. I don't know anything about the previous crew, and I plan on having a great big talk to if the captain gets reinstated or not, or whoever comes in charge. But Starfleet has rules, and there's ideals. I want you to find the value and good of both of those and hold on to those. There's children here that I have to keep safe, and I can't do that if you make a stink and someone wants to have revenge upon us. And vice versa. I'll do my best to make sure everyone stays cool in any situation. Sound fair? Oh, all means. As soon as we came in, we saw how many... Was it Rom Rami? Which yep. you said how many personnel were on the station and yeah, it definitely caught my attention yeah it's interesting seeing children again <laughs> okay. okay and on that right. note we should move along um chief engineer uh, lieutenant commander shras or the shras sorry anything that you'd like to do uh just really quick i'm overseeing the um any the other engineers who came aboard board to uh repair um the ship Okay. And um, as I'm kind of overseeing and uh, directing them, I'm regaling them with the tales of the time that I, I defeated a Klingon one-on-one -on -one in, in personal combat to um, defend a human, who then rewarded me with this um, religious artifact known as, as the Disco Ball, uh, which apparently the people used in, um, to such a re religious fervor. They came down with um, uh, this, this fever that, that was typically seen on, on um, what they call Saturday nights, before um, heading to their religious place of worship on the, the day of the sun the next day. So it's, it's very fascinating. I'm, I'm kind of telling this, this as I kind of guide them through all the repairs. Uh, taking the uh, Entertainer's Guide to History lesson in Starfleet. Very well. I mean, think, a lot of things get lost in the translation after these many, this many. Yeah, Khan Nuli and Soon did that to a lot of things. Okay. So, um, Lieutenant Erkin, I believe you're the last one before we do the captain scene. Anything that you'd like to do? Uh, I would like to book some holodeck time. Okay. To recreate the bridge of the lunette. Okay. Uh, and sit in the sit in the helm and make spaceship noises. No, okay. The, uh, um, sort of looking at tactical layout, like without actually talking to anyone really about it. it was like tactical layout their ship compared to ours okay sort of thinking about um you know if if starship combat would happen to break out where our ship would best be placed where their ship would best be placed that sort of thing okay so this is the bridge of the uss lunette Befenty. Mm -hmm. okay. and you're taking the seat typically uh, offered by specialist david mudd um, your flight simulators uh, she handles quite well uh, use um, for reference the Nighthawk is a scale 5 vessel and the lunette is a scale 3 so she can do some very tight maneuvers um, although you think that the uh, USS uh, the Wraith class the USS Spectre might be able to do a little bit better but it is designed for dogfighting Uh, armaments, uh, phaser, photon torpedoes, that sort of thing. Photon, uh, photon torpedoes and phaser arrays. Um, it does not have any phaser cannons. And it is armed with quantum launchers, actually. Ooh, I like this. Uh, maximum warp. Sort of take it for a, a hollow test run. <laughs> uh, maximum warp for this ship. Did I write it down? Apparently I did not. Uh, let's say ma uh, maximum warp for this ship is 9.5, which beats the um, Nighthawk's maximum warp of about 8.75. And its cruising speed would be warp 9. Ooh, I will make note of that. Yeah. See if I could get the chief engineer to eke some, some extra warp out of 
out of our ship. Mm -hmm. Yes, a twinge the, of jealousy. The USS Nighthawk was built for its sensor capability, not its engine prowess. Okay. I'll take it through some, like a light, old school Klingon encounter. Just yeah. run it through its paces, get a feel for her, get a feel for where she, like her soft spots are, and that sort of thing. Yep. Uh, so she's a, um, she's a good ship. Fairly tough, but um, she does not do very well in close range combat. Um, everyone knows that the Defiant and its uh, spiritual successor, the Sao Paulo class, has some pretty potent cannons on front, which means that they're designed to go up close and personal with the enemy and leave nothing standing. The Lunette is more of a fast-moving artillery machine, uh, designed to keep at medium to long range, launching torpedoes and opportunistic phaser blasts. Phaser blasts. Uh, for comparison, is the Defiant and the Sao Paulo also class four? Uh, scale five, scale three. Oh, scale. Yes. Scale three. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'll end my session and I'll wander down to the to the Bajoran Shrine to wish uh, to seek the Prophet's blessings, but we don't have to cover that in the, in the scene well. at all. Very well. Uh, then we are going to do the scene between the captain. Uh, let's see. What was I looking for? Right, the scene of the captain and the of and the director. Uh, for ease of scenery, we will have it in the captain's office. Uh, okay. I'm just going to pretend that this is the Admiral's office, which is on deck two of the station. Uh, Director Chalmers is busy operating under... is busy with uh, three different screens up and two different communication channels piped into his head. Uh, he looks up as you enter. Captain! <laughs> ah, Director Chalmers. And before we begin, quick question with my PM. Uh, yes, uh, no. That, yes or no? Uh, let's okay. see. Uh, no. All right, cool. Just making sure. Yep. So, Director, I don't mean to get in the way of all of your current goings on, but there are a few things that we need to discuss. And seeing as the Nighthawk is unlikely to be back in this area after the mission is over, I believe it's probably more prudent for me to discuss them right now. Right. Say your piece. Well, sir, to be quite honest, off the record, I believe that the situation with the Expanse, with all the information that we've uncovered, is a little bit more dire than we may want to lead on. I, I'd honestly, coming to this station, and actually, is a, oh, well, I don't have to tell you, but seeing these people and seeing the civilians here kind of gives a little bit more of a credence to, you know, ensure, ensure their safety, especially with everything else that the Nighthawk is account. I'll be brief. I believe that we need to raise the security alert in the system and within the in, within the entire expanse itself. But regardless of whoever ends up being command of Deep Space 15, I need to work with them to establish pro proper security protocols for the future. I'm not going to lie, Captain. This whole place is a powder keg waiting to explode with one poorly aimed phaser shot. I get that... I get that uh, Admiral Riker wants to gain some brownie points before with the brass before he retires with his whole remote starbase initiative program of his. And it does make us look good. However, there are problems at home that we need these resources for. And poppycock to anyone who says otherwise. And he sighs. But it's not Starfleet Intelligence's job to determine where Starfleet where Starfleet expands to, or how it spends the 90% of its uh, spending. We just spend our 10% of the spending, trying to keep as much of it held together with uh, spit and duct tape. But yes, I am in agreement that this station is so very underprotected. And the fact that there is that it's still standing after two months of having Romulans, Klingons, and Breen on board... And I've seen mention of Ferengi. Seriously. I'm surprised they haven't sold the station out from under you yet. To be quite honest, it's only a matter of time. <sighs> and at this point, um, 
I'd actually like to give you the opportunity, GM, mm. to uh, challenge one of my values. Oh, and what would you like to challenge? The best is yet to come, but it will be built with our own hands. Mm. Why not? So, I'll give you more determination for that. So, um, here's the thing. So, once all is said and I'm going to give you the determination, and determination that, well, I will offer you determination on that. Uh, sorry, are you challenging it, a.k.a. you're removing the value, or do you want me to tap it? I'd like you to tap it, tap it. and okay. if I fail, then by all means, I okay. can be remote. Fair enough. Uh, so, I'd like you to tap, I'd like to tap that value, and so once this whole once this initial situation is done and dusted, uh, you and the captain of this ship are going to have a pretty good argument. Or you're going to come at the captain fairly hard with his apparent lack of security procedures. Certainly. And uh, for anyone listening, especially from Cerberus Crew, because I haven't done this with them yet um if i tap a value of yours and give you determination that is yours until you spend it so it does not go away at the end of the session which makes it all the more tantalizing if you wish to take it director uh director chalmers just wishes sits back uh taps a couple of his screens closed and immediately opens two new screens Look at this, Captain. If we had a station this powerful in Sector f in Sector Beta Phi, Romulans wouldn't even think to cross to even come close to the neutral zone. Instead, we're out here looking at dead Borg technology and poking species we have no right to poke. Uh, those species have more than ample capability to poke back. And with all due respect, even with a minor briefing that we've gotten on this assignment and we're still a day out, I really, I really don't think that, uh, forgive me, I'm forgetting the name of the planet that we're about to get Ebon. to. Ebon. Ebon? Ebon? I really don't think Ebon is the largest of our concern. And it's, it's not, it's not the, it's not the Vataris either. There's other things that are lurking out there in the Expanse that are related, and the pattern is forming. The Nighthawk hasn't necessarily been able to figure it out yet, but I've most definitely noticed it. Hmm. Yes. Like, there's not only the Iban, there's these scorpion corpses that were found. We don't even know what's up with them yet. Um, these Zell Borg drones, I hope for our sake they prove friendly. Let me be clear. And I'm going to actually cut Director Chalmers off. Mm. I'd like to be clear. During this mission, I have every intention to make sure if, if Cerberus is unable to accomplish their scientific goals right now i'd like to accelerate with our with their proximity to the broad transport hub and with what we just came back from learning about the vitars empire and their home world i'd actually like to take the nighthawk for some more expanded scouting possibly set up listening posts within the transport hub itself i like the cut of your jib captain once this is all done and dusted, submit to me your um, your scouting plans, and we'll go. F and I will pass them up to the brass. My brass, not Starfleet's. Understood. And by all means, I, regardless of however this turns out, I feel like this is uh, this is necessary. The ends may actually have to justify the means. I'll try to keep the battle out of your arena as much as possible, but seeing these people here. They deserve more than that. They deserve more than what we're doing now. Agreed. Well, that's why I wear the red tie. That's like <laughs> captain's pips and intelligence ranks. Trust me. Probably admiral's ranks, act actually. I really should talk to someone about formalizing the my directorship, or my director's hierarchy. Well, if you need a letter of recommendation, you know who to talk to. Oh, and one more thing. Yeah? I'd like to actually see the complete unclassified dossiers of the rest of the Cerberus crew that we're taking along on this on this adventure. Huh. Considering what's happened within the Expanse and considering the operational instability that is on its way, I won't pretend like it can be avoided. It's on its way. At this point, it's about mitigating damage. 
I'd like to make you able to know exactly who is in my purview, who I'm responsible for. If the captain yep. were more stable in the situation, I'd be having this discussion with them, but as well, that doesn't necessarily seem to be an option right now. When I'm done yeah. being polite. He's, uh, he takes the uh, two screens that he has open, condenses them, sends their data to a pad. You and I are on the same wavelength, Captain. And just between you and me, um, the Serato Draco is actually also working for us. Whether or not she tells the captain is not my concern. Um, however, she's the since our um, bartenders had to burn himself due to an explosion down here, Starfleet Intelligence found it necessary to deploy another agent. She does not report to you, but is more than willing to work with you. Uh, please contact her on these coded frequencies, and the um, ex the Midas receiver will know what to do. I understand. I'll leave the internal matter of the running of Cerberus to the captain and the rest of the staff. I'm not here to go interfere with that. We have bigger issues outside. But I appreciate the uh, the dossier. Right. And without even, without telling you dismissed, he makes a real good show of resuming the communications that he had going before you entered the room. And he looks up with the expression of, oh, you're still here? Well, at that point, I'll just turn around and walk out. Back okay. straight, held up, held, head held up high. And I got a mission to do. Yep. And on that note, I think it is a good time to take our bio break before the second half of the episode. Uh, so if everyone is okay, we shall resume in about ten minutes. Works for me.
here. And we are back. Welcome back, folks, from our break. And we are going to cut to the uh, ships as they are beginning to leave the dry dock or the docking area. So, uh, Lieutenant Commander Shras, uh, or Shras the Shred, uh, you are quite pleased with the work that the uh, deep with us ah that Cerberus Station engineers have done on your ship. It's almost as good as the day it left Station Zero, but not quite. But what do you expect? These guys are not Starfleet intelligence trained. Yeah, not not bad. I mean, the important thing is, hey, we got it all done in time, so we're all ready to head. Precisely. Mm -hmm. So. As you guys power up to leave, um, uh, as you guys power up to leave, uh, the USS Lunette uh, jumps her engines, and at the order of Acting Captain Bernie Jail, uh, decides to cut in line and get out of the station first. You know, after all, station privilege, he says. I face palm. By by all means, lead the way, Captain. <laughs> yeah, Larsa is not Larsa is not saying anything, but she. There's one in every ship. There's an egomaniac in every ship and station. And this one is commanding it. Okay. So, question: yes. um, Who is piloting the Lunette in this situation? And uh, are all service personnel? Up um, so on board the Lunette, we may as well go to that. So Lunette Bridge. On board the Bridge of the Lunette, we have Acting Captain. Uh, let me get all my tokens going here. I have a surprising amount of them. Two games worth, to be precise. Acting Captain Bernie Jail has taken the seat. Uh, David Mudd is the pilot. Commander Dalrum is currently in a hearing. Uh, so that doesn't leave us a lot on the ship. Uh, so we have a Lieutenant Yamato is on the engineering console. Uh, Demos, where would you be? Are you? Yeah, naturally. Demos is tactical. And where would Commander Area be? Honestly, I think I would just be in sick bay unless I've been told I need to be uh, acting first officer. Mm. Uh, acting Captain Commander Jail says that that is not necessary. Okay. He has this. He has the pulse of this ship and every body on it. After all, he is a full-blown Betazoid telepath. And if anyone was, anyone else was thinking any bad thoughts, he would be the first to know. I'm I can feel his ego from here. Thoughts. <laughs> and so we will quickly now cut to the bridge of the um, Nighthawk. So, <clears throat> uh, currently on the bridge, I have the captain, the commander, and uh, Lieutenant Alak. And for some reason, Liam Helsing has wandered off the bridge. There he is again. Um, good Togi. Well, yeah, Togi's a given. I mean, by now they probably have his own very, his very own cup holder. Togi's, <laughs> uh, Togi's basically the pet, the ship pet. No, oh, I wait, would wait, hard... wait, 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 wait. No. He is a crew member. Get it right. Yeah, he is the ambassador well, of the entire Togalau species. Thank you very much. He just oh, chooses okay, to say this so... small. Okay, so. Uh, more mascot. Yeah, if you laugh at my plants, I'm going to laugh at your light. Okay, let's let the passive aggression, or the active aggression pass. <laughs> and uh, Shras the Shran, where would you be? Are you in engineering or up on the bridge? Uh, probably engineering, unless the captain needs me anywhere else. Uh, very well. <clears throat> and uh, let's see. Uh, cool. Mr. Kowax. So this will be the first time you're in sick bay. Um, so because this is your first time in sick bay, I will actually do the quick scene of you in sick bay. Just because, um, 
if anyone wishes to join him in sick bay now would be a good time let's see uh so you meet your crew um there's not many there is ensign ira zinn who is the head nurse and really the only nurse he's just he shrugs he's also a full beta zoid uh oh. yep okay uh there's also ensign zot a bolian who is uh specializes in uh, triage surgery okay so i stumbled my way to here i'm a little disappointed after seeing the station's medical facilities but this is going to be nice and homely <laughs> um <clears throat> Probably first thing he does is when we get in there, he'll look for things, uh, get everything ready, and um, he'll introduce himself to it's Zot, the Bolian. As uh, she nods, yeah. Okay, Zot. Um, okay, excellent. And then Ira Zin. I believe that's the how we pronounce it. Yes. Ira Zin. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I, you know, he'll introduce himself, of course. Uh, I am uh, Coox. And uh, I guess we're going to be going into battle very shortly. So we need to have everything pre prepped and ready. Uh, I don't know how the previous doctor did things, but uh, let's make sure we have everything ready to go by the bio beds. And he'll kind of walk over to the bio beds and kind of give them a, gr a glance and take a look at them. And then look for where the different instruments should be. And they're in strange locations. And go, <sighs> really? This looks like Vulcan work. What, why Why is this? I know they're alphabetically supposed to be next to each other, but that's not the way they go when you need them. You know, he'll start rearranging things and kind of, you know, not tossing them because they're precision instruments, but definitely moving them around. Uh, let's put this here. Let's put that there. And, you know. The, uh, the back of your head tingles as uh, Ira Zin's thoughts enter your head. She said that was the most logical way, place to put them, Lieutenant Commander. And with a finger in the air, I knew it! It was a Vulcan! Man, what, what, is with, what is with the Vulcans? And they put things in alphabetical order, and, like, that makes no sense. That's why they're always so slow with surgery. Why do you think so many Vulcans die? Oh, I'm being racist again. Aren't, uh, you didn't hear that. And he'll, he'll look to, to Ira Zinn. <laughs> they, make, thought, they make a uh, show of them being extremely busy in other tasks. And he'll just, he knows that both of them hurt him, and he'll just continue moving it on, and, you know, and uh, <clears throat> he'll probably uh, do a quick calm up to the bridge. <clears throat> uh, Captain, we're uh, we're already in sick bay for any uh, any uh, casualties or uh, injuries. Well, here's hoping that such a thing will not come to pass. I hope your services are needed, Doctor. But in any case, me? I mean, I do think it's prudent of me to pay you a visit really quick. Do you have the time? Uh, yeah, we're just getting ready down here. Please pop in if you want to. And moving at the speed of plot. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, um, I'm not actually here, unfortunately for you, to uh, get to know Kolox. I just wanted to, uh, I am in sickbay, though. Oh. Once, once I arrive, I'm going to have with him, with a hand, I'm going to hand him a data pad. I'm oh. Just, with uh, everything else that, uh, that is actually contained with our, within the station, including particular biological pathogens that may or may not actually be on the ship. I'm oh. just gonna hand it. Uh, so, so he's gonna give a quick look at this. Uh, what is this? This is from the station contact? No. This is what's on board. And because of that, it's now your responsibility. Oh, this job gets more and more interesting by the second. Okay. And um, he's, you know, sc sc strolling through it, looking at the, each part. Uh, metagaming just ever so slightly. Uh, well, not metagaming, overruling, or providing context, I should say. Um, what he, the captain has given you is the samples of virus that were left over from the time the rocket hit the ship and disgorged a memory, er mem a memory erasing plague. Oh, this looks fascinating. Where is this stored? Is this here? All the prudent details are on the data pad, but I must remind you that now that you're here, we move really quickly on this ship. So I need, of course. You, to, I need you to be able to. I need to be able to know that you're able to play ball. Of course, sir. Of course, anything you need, whatever, whatever intelligence needs, whatever the Federation needs, I'll be right here for it. 
I can understand. Well, I appreciate that, uh, Dr. Kowak. But, uh, you know, we're in the ball game now, so things only get more interesting, as we say, from here on out. And if that's the case, I might as well. We don't necessarily have the time for as great as an introduction as I'd like, so trial by fire. Well, as uh, any, the station taught me anything, uh, this crew and anything around it gets goes very quickly, and you get introduced to all subjects instantaneously. Uh, this was cr the the exact post I was looking for. Sitting behind a bench was not going to do anything for me. This is exciting. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, perhaps later, uh, when you're not busy, uh, we can uh, we can go over your medical records uh, with perhaps uh, some uh, familiar drink after everything's blown over. Sure. I understand how important it is for new doctors to always want updated scans. It's so personal with you. I respect it. Well, I we, we got to have the captain's ear. <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> gives, a, gives a knowing laugh. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, speaking of having a captain's ear, and I'm at this point, I'm going to kind of signal you telepathically. Okay. And in that case, speaking of having the captain's ear, would you mind entertaining me for a bit? I mean, you're a member of this crew now, and like I said, trial by fire. So in that case, you're not on service anymore. And I need you for what we're about to do. And we're I'm responding telepathically, I would assume. Yeah, of mm -hmm. course. What what do you need? I in that case I'm going to tap my con badge and say Captain Sengrel to uh Captain what was his name? Jell? A uh, jail. Jail, sorry, excuse me. Uh, jail. Captain Sengrel to Captain Jail. Jail here. Go ahead, Captain. So can you meet me on board the Nighthawk? I'd like to talk about a few operational procedures really quickly. We'll transport you over a lickety split. Of course, Captain. I shall. Trans I'm assuming this is transport is happening just before you guys jump to warp. Or, yes. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Uh, action, Captain. Who's in charge? He just looks around. Uh, Why? Well, I, I suppose that would be the. Com Whoever outranks everyone else here. Uh, Acting Captain Bernie Jail calling Commander Area. Yes, this is Sick Bay. Have you stabbed someone that I should know about? Not yet, but the day is young, and there's many Breen out there. Um, I'm being off ship. You apparently have the highest rank. Therefore, if you could come up to the bridge, please. Right, I will be up shortly. And by the time you are on the bridge, he's already left. Okay, uh, let's have this scene in the Nighthawks conference room. Do you want anybody else in the conference room? Um, probably Commander Helsing. Um, if uh, Commander, I'll leave Commander Bashir on the on the bridge. Okay. But we're not. I have no plans to. Well, actually, we'll see how this goes. I have no plans. Oh, well, we'll see how this goes. Okay. No, I do have plans. I yeah. just didn't want to. We'll see. Yeah, sure. Okay, you sense his ego before he even enters the room. Ah, oh, the ego! Oh. <laughs> Captain, I must say that you have a very fine ship. It's a shame I wasn't able to study most of its... Um, most of its... Uh, Ah, most of its technical specifications before I could beam on board. As you can understand, being an acting captain is quite a taxing duty and you can see from his um you can see that somehow he has produced a fourth black pip on his uh collar not starfleet reg uniform regulation but he has it nonetheless uh he sits down in the in the chair closest to the door leans back and lays his fingers over his uh stomach ah, so oh. we're going to you're going to stealth in there find who's needs to be punched and then we show up and we punch him right well, I mean, first of all, let me just say, you know, I completely understand and respect the burdens of command. After all, us captains really do have to look out for the well-being of our crew, don't we? Absolutely. Uh, every crew, every man's life is is uh, but putty in the hands that must be shaped, molded. And without proper guidance, they could fall flat or melt away or turn into water or evaporate. Well, if that's the case, then I'm sure that you have the ability to completely trust and 
I'm sure that the crew of the of the Lunet and the rest of the people on Cerberus have, you know, your complete confidence. Of course, I would not have been picked for the role of acting captain if the Admiral did not see my um, my star my sterling reference as commander. I'm certain. Well, in any case, for me, I mean, I you could only see some of the crew in the conference room right now. The rest are busy attending their duties because, by all means, you know how how dangerous and how important the upcoming mission is. My first officer is right there on the bridge, uh, holding steady. And uh, you can see my security officer here, uh, Lieutenant Commander Lee Helsing, and our doctor, which you're se probably semi-familiar with, of course, uh, Kova Kolox. I mean, he has been on the station for quite some time. Of course, I I would recommend com I would recom I would recognize and I know Mr. Kovox here very well, and he does pr mispronounce your name. Actually, this is a GM mistake. Each time, Kovox, 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 Kovox. <laughs> Like so, each time he says it, I'll say quacks, quacks, <laughs> quacks, quacks. <laughs> so, at this, point, at this point, I'm gonna telepathically communicate to Coax, and I'm going to look at Commander Helsing. And with our operational, since we've already have history with operations, he already, you already know the look that I'm giving you is one of delegation. So in that case, I'm going to. I'm looking at you, I'm in between you two, I'm basically just saying, it's showtime. Let's put C C Captain Jail in his place. So, Commander <laughs> Helsing, I'm sure, I'm sure the, I'm sure the Lunette has already gotten the uh, advanced long green sensor regions that the Nighthawk has taken ever since our senses were able to be repaired, correct? Aye, sir. No, I full well make a that... note to send those to him. <laughs> knowing full well that we didn't send them already. I'm I give you the knowing look that they will have them by the time this meeting's over. <laughs> well, I hope I hope you take your time. <clears throat> uh, Jail says, "Yes, my ca the commander received them uh, just shortly before I beamed over. I admit I have not had the time to look at it." Oh well, you know, oh? it's good. But you know that semi concerns me. If that's it, you haven't had the time to take over, to look over our, our technical specifications, but we're going to Ebon, but you haven't able you haven't been able to take a look at our sensor readings either. The Nighthawk is an advanced ship. We are intelligence after all. Uh, the ego flutters just a smidgen, to those of oh. you who can sense telepathicness, and he just says, "Well, Captain, you are well aware of the current situation on the Cerberus station, ah, or." of Station Deep Space 15. I was pr promoted with very short amount of time to get situated, and, as you can understand, burdens of command. Oh, I most definitely do, which is why we're having this meeting right. By all means, I didn't intend to put you on the spot or anything. I just wanted to make sure that we were on the same page. You know, captain to captain. Of course, captain. I fully understand, and I cannot wait to review the detail, the information that you have provided us. Well, about that, since you haven't necessarily been able to completely uh, review it, uh, the rest of my crew um, is available, along with my first officer. Um, I'm going to give them a ping and see if they could beam over to the Lunar class, just to make sure we could take care of any particular protocols or operational uh, disadvantages that may come up in the mission. You understand. Not to supersede your authority, with you know, on your order, of course. Hmm. Roll me presence plus command, please. With a difficulty of three, just be because his ego is so bloody thick. Sure. And if Coox wishes to assist... Be I do. I think I have a talent for this, actually. I'm trying to go find it. I actually uh, I actually do, too. I never got to um, use it until now, actually. I have Bargain. Oh, okay. And what does Bargain do? Refresh my memory? Uh, let me go read it. When negotiating an offer with someone during a social comp, I can re-roll a, a d20 on my next Persuade test to convince well, them. That's definitely an offer. Okay. Um, okay. Presence so, Command. Uh, presence Command, if you have, say, negotiations or bargaining or probably even diplomacy. I do have diplomacy. And 
What will I be assisting with? Uh, same thing. Presence, command, and similar command. talents. Command. Or focuses, I should say. And I only roll one, right? Yep, you only roll one. Okay. Um, um, I also have a talent okay. uh, called Insightful Guidance. Um, whenever you assist a character who is in a social conflict, would this mm -hmm. be a social conflict? I would call or... this a social conflict, yes. Okay. Using your knowledge of psychology or emotional states, the character is considered to have an advantage in addition to the normal benefits provided by your assist. Ah, okay. So, oh. considering that oh. the captain just rolled a complication... But I can reroll it. You can, you can indeed. Uh, so how would you like to flavor your advantage? Now, advantages are primarily explained narratively, and then bonuses will apply after you... Okay, so me and Sengirl are going back and forth telepathically, kind of like, probably, you know, while he's talking, I'm kind of like, oh, did you feel that? You feel his ego deflate ever so slightly? Okay, we need to hit that point a little bit more. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know he, he definitely felt that, you know, and okay. every time, like, feeling the fluctuations, like, his uncertainty with, like, every time he presents new information, it's like, yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it, nail that. Okay, so I will allow you a reroll of your assist if you wish based Ooh. on that advantage. Fantastic. And I closed my sheet. I snuck. <laughs> don't you hate it when that happens? I don't know why. I close it like it's in my way and you go close. It's like, no, I needed that. Yeah. Presence command. Okay. So he's re-rolling his assist and I'm re-rolling my, uh, well, my one. Yeah, one precisely. So there's the two successes you need. Oh, the three. Three successes, I should say. So yeah, um, you are able to... Uh, outmaneuver this individual um, very similarly to how a uh, fighter ship would outmaneuver a galaxy class starship and yet somehow Commander Jail thinks that he has won this encounter and offers to show this Commander Bashir just how a ship of the line functions well I most definitely appreciate uh, you you know offering up the opportunity and, you know, I always want to make sure I get clear with uh, the captain first. So I'll make sure to delegate anything else and the rest of the things that may come up in the mission uh, while we depart. Very well, Captain. I shall bring your commander to my ship. Sure. And as he is making his way out of the room, mm -hmm. I'd like to pull one last, uh, one last thing. Okay. Oh, one more thing. Uh, uh, one more thing, Commander Jail. Starfleet Regulation 191, Article 14. Since we are going into a combat situation involving more than one ship, uh, command will fall to the vessel with tactical superiority. So, in this case, the Nighthawk. I hope you can understand that. Uh, there's... Um, so, if you can see the mental image, or the telepathic image of a balloon being popped, and sort of like, <laughs> halfway around a room, that sort of displays that's what you guys are getting from his ego <laughs> he's so refreshing he does put on a straight face though and says of course captain and he bites back whatever retort is about to leave his throat he bites it back turns around and just as the door is closed he says right commander bashir you're with me My that antenna will nice. perk up and look at the captain <laughs> in the ready room. And I just look back at him and I nod. I won my battle, now go win yours. Yes. <laughs> Transporter lock on your commander. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> just, so just before the... Um, uh, just as Mud prepares the ship the USS Lunette to jump to warp. Uh, Commander Area, uh, acting captain, has returned to the br has returned to the ship and has brought the commander of the Nighthawk on board. Oh God! There's two of them. <laughs> so that, one is for him. One is for the ego. It's actually just a bunch of triples in a trench coat. No, we're not playing that D&D &D class ever. Okay. Uh, Commander Bashir, uh, this is a much tighter ship than what you have grown accustomed to. Um, the USS 
Uh, Lunette is a Maelstrom class, which, of course, is more similar to a Defiant in, stru in structure. And likewise, there's no Commander Seat. I'll take the Science Station. Okay. We will take Science. Where did my mouse go? There's my mouse. And just because I find it amusing, Midas is going to come over and just sort of look at you with its optic. Yes. <laughs> Nothing. Hello. Uh, okay. And we are going to jump to warp and move to the Eban system. So, Captain, I'm assuming your power play was to leave Commander Bashir on board that ship? On um, board the Lunette? Only to his discretion. I only wanted him there before we approached Ebon. Okay. Um, it was mostly a power play, but I'm not gonna... I'm actually not here to, you know, supersede him or the rest of the crew member there. That's not my plan. Fair enough. So he can remain there if he wants after he's done, you know, raising the Nighthawk flag, as it were. He's free to return. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Bashir, what would you like to do? I'll stay here just in case I'm needed. Fair enough. Okay. Then we are going to cut to the Iban system. Now, the Iban system had five planets in it. Um, the outermost was a Class S planet, so a Saturn-sized gas giant um, known as Serenol. And it is there that we... It is at the extreme long range that you guys are going to drop out of warp. Uh, in transit. Yes. Uh, my call, I'd like, just like to brief the captain and, and Helsing on the tactical capabilities that I found out on the lunette. Very well. Uh, go ahead and brief him. Uh, the lunette, while a tough and fast ship, is more geared for long range combat. Just so you're aware. So in the case of a uh, enemy incursion, I suggest we get between them and her uh, and protect them as much as we can, especially now that we've got our commander on board, Thurs. Okay. Yeah, that's gonna just something to keep in mind, Captain, that's gonna run some of the issues in the gate, some of our strong advantages, like our active camouflage system and other things where it makes us harder to see, and they're going to probably shoot at the easier to see target well i'll definitely keep that in mind at the same time the lunette does have the ability to take a few hits but hopefully we'll be able to go through this with mitigating circumstances <clears throat> okay uh so uh departing at uh extreme long range of the pl uh, planet of serenal it is a Saturn-sized class, or Class S planet, as I've stated before. Um, the lunette had hidden behind it um, while the Iban were doing their first, or their first warp uh, jump. Uh, what you remember about the state, about the system, is that there was actually a derelict Borg station that was in orbit that you guys would have dealt with if it wasn't for the fact that someone was trying to blow up the station at the time. Uh, sadly, now that you are back, it does appear that the Borg station has been reactivated. Um, it is a scale 5 station, and there are two uh, Breen ships in proximity. Uh, let's center and zoom in to show the stream. Uh, one is a Plestral Raider, a scale 4 uh, destroyer style of Breen ship. The other is a Resreth Dreadnought, a scale 6. And then Oof. there's the Borg Station. Uh, the Borg Station is um, emitting a high amount of... Um, uh, ah, is emitting a gravity field that is pulling rocks and debris into it. Um, it and that's all you're able to tell me before you guys start doing your sensor stuff. Um, and I should mention that I have codified rules for silent running, 
and I will just quickly paste them into the Discord chat here if you got or not Discord the uh, the stream the roll 20 chat that's it too many bloody chats open what do you guys uh, wish to do a uh, starship expert task if you don't find. okay uh, let's get that uh, here. something plus con I think uh, that would be I believe that would be insight plus con uh, difficulty of two Assuming you're, those are just against the Breen. The Borg station would be a difficulty three. Uh, yeah, just against the Breen for now. Okay. They are the more pressing threat. <laughs> I'd like to spend a momentum as well. Okay. If there's no objections. Three, two, one, no objections. Okay. All you, man. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Woohoo! That's a lot of momentum back. Okay, uh, that is five successes, so three momentum. So I believe you are now at four, mo four stored momentum. Okay, um, both of these... Cla uh, let's see. So the Resreth Dreadnought, the big one, is uh, one of the Breen's most powerful warships that has been uh, no noted to date by Starfleet uh, Command. It is a. Let's pull up its stats so I can give you accurate um, information. Green ships. So, um, it 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 is um, a tank of a ship. So it is uh, well armed, uh, well sh or well armored, well shielded, but it doesn't have the most um, powerful of weaponry. Um, the pl uh, they use um, uh, the Breen have uh, long since adapted the Dominion of Polaron weaponry, uh, phase Polaron, which allows their ships to pierce the Starfleet shields. And in th what is typical in an arms race is that the Starfleet shields will adapt, and then the Breen will adapt their weapons around it. So to get hit with them is potent. It will sting, but they have uh, their weapons are known to not track uh, fast ships as well. Um, that is probably why they have the Plesh Troll Raider, which is a f uh, scale four. Um, again, carrying um, Polaron beam arrays. And what is interesting about the Plesh Troll is your intelligence recognizes that it is armed with an energy draining weapon. So. Nasty uh, thing. And I'd like to use uh, the bonus momentum I get from the extra break for the obtained information of have they detected us yet? They have made no attempts that they've uh, detected you, and that's why I brought you out at extreme range, so that you could do things before they do so. Okay. Uh, the last piece of information I should mention is that the Breen have de w developed Quantum Slipstream Drive roughly, if I recall my timeline right, about 12 years ago. So the fact that they're out here is... Not a surprise. I'll pass on all that information I got back to the captain. And just broadcast it generally on, on the bridge. Well, all that info is acknowledged and received. So I still feel like we need the ability to, at least the Nighthawk has, should go in closer. Um, still don't want to come out firing yet, but... I want to make sure that we can engage our active camouflage system for now. If they haven't, if they if they're not scanning, um, then they're probably not going to go detect the, detect the lunette unless we give them a reason to. So, but we should just take us in silent, silent running under black alert. Okay. Uh, so, if you could please roll me. Um, so, black alert. Well, the running silent option is. Um, da. So to run silent is going to require a control plus engineering task, either from tactical or engineering. And the ships, and this will be assisted by the ship's engine plus security. And the difficulty is two. 
Yeah, if it's control engineering, it's probably better if we have an engineer or the um, Ronnie run it. Okay. Um, if uh, Thashran, do you feel comf comfortable engaging the silent running option? Sure, I can do that. Okay. So control plus engineering, right? Correct. Um, while we're doing... Oh, what's the, oh, sorry. What's the difficulty? Uh, difficulty of two. Um, so, uh, on the lunette, um, I really feel bad about taking focus away, you know, taking away player agency because of everything. Is there anything that you guys would like to do? have the lunette do? Um, unless uh, Demo says otherwise, I think the plan is basically stick at long range, and then if we need to open up with quantums, we open up with quantums. Yeah, I was going to suggest that we kind of stay behind in the uh, with that asteroid, and uh, as soon as you need us, we'll act. But okay. otherwise, you got this. Fair enough. I mean, I will point out, though, that this is primarily the Nighthawks mission. You yeah. all need to be the ones that initiate the communication with the Breen, not us. Oh, totally. Yep, just making sure. Um, let's see. So we have that, we have that. Okay, so that is one degree, or three successes. So you get that one momentum back there, Thishran, as the ship enters black alert. So um, because this could potentially get tactical, um, I need someone keeping an eye on the... Uh, the Nighthawks character sheet and reduce the power by four. <clears throat> Roger, and we're back to full structure and everything, correct? That's correct. You're back to full structure, full shields. It's like she just she just left dry dock because she kind of did. Uh, let's see. Pop that open. Okay, and now because you guys have this funky talent called Active Camouflage Systems... Um, so where would you, so, um, in the upper corner of the map, there is the, uh, range chart. So how close do you guys want to move the Nighthawk? Mm, let me see here. Uh, I vote for medium. Yeah, no, we could uh, move into medium range here. Okay. Um, so, I'm just going to roll sensors from them to see if they detect you. Oh. Nope. And I have a handy new macro for this. Nope, oh, here button oh uh, so that is two ones that is four degrees of success okay <laughs> uh, so as you guys get into media um, as you guys enter medium range the dreadnoughts course immediately shifts to your direction they raise shields and start powering weapons and it's not long before the plush trawl does the same. And at this point, we are going to go into starship combat. Uh, would yep. it be safe to say that the moment the lunette detects this, that we were already moving either towards the asteroid or out from around it? Uh, if you spend two momentum to create the advantage, I will give it to you. I say we do it. Sure. Absolutely. <clears throat> okay. Um, now... I'm just juggling people around here. Um, if I recall correctly, Commander Thashran is still on the lunette? Or no, Commander Bashir is still on the lunette, right? Correct. Okay, cool. Um, then, for the sake of funsies, um, I'm going to just say, and to keep everyone involved as much as possible, that you guys have determined that Commander Jail is an absolutely crummy commander. And you have um, surpassed him for command of the vessel for the mission. So, 
Congratulations, you're now acting captain of the USS Lunette. I was actually just typing that out right now. Ha! Okay, just to keep everyone engaged, and, oh, believe me, he's resigning under protest, but. Okay, so, adding to. I sent him a telepathic communication that said you suck. Turn and there. <laughs> okay, so. Four, five, and six. Okay, so uh, Starship Combat uh, works f in this fashion. Uh, we're go within each combat round or combat turn, I should say. Every ship has the number of actions equal to its scale. And ELH, if you've run combat form with me, if I say anything incorrectly, please correct me. And okay. yep, during each combat or during and it will bounce back and forth between uh, ships. Um, there should be reference. Um, your combat actions, I believe, can be found on page... I had it open. Uh, I believe it was 221 or so of the core rulebook. That's where it starts, yeah. yeah. And we will go from there. So, uh, because the lunette has decided to take, seize the initiative, they can have first action. Well, what I would say on that is the Nighthawk still needs to be the one that opens up a channel here, because if we just start firing, that's an international incident. Fair so, enough. I think it Red actually alert, needs to be the Nighthawk. Okay. Yeah, I think the Nighthawk needs to go first here. Okay. Okay, uh, Nighthawk, you have a class, or you have a larger vessel bearing down on you. Uh, it has apparently seen through your active camouflage. Oh boy, this is what I live for. So to be clear, um, this is the Dreadnought. This right? is the Dreadnought, yes. And it's Breen in origin? It is Breen. I really wanted to try the same trick that I tried the first time around, but I don't think that's going to work, so I don't want to risk. Okay. So instead, yeah, we'll just open up standard hailing frequencies. <clears throat> okay. Um, a typical Breen in full Breen armor answers the hail. <clears throat> Uh, real quick, yes. Um, could we make this an actual uh, task? I mean, it is a difficulty to... zero task as written. You want but momentum? That can... makes sense. Um, yep. So let's open hailing frequencies, which I believe is two twenty-three. Two twenty-three. Open hailing frequencies. So someone needs to roll me a control plus engineering. I would recommend that Vault be the one to do that. So if someone wants to activate her and roll me a control engineering. And the uh, yeah, Nighthawk sure. will assist you with a comms engineering. Correct. Well, I could take care of rolling for the Nighthawk. Okay. Uh, how about, well, let's get our doctor into the, into the fray. Go pull up that sheet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, doctor, if you could pull up Vault Rani. Uh, she's under supporting characters, Nighthawk engineering. Vault Rani. There it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what am I rolling? Uh, this would be a control plus engineering task. And if you have anything along the lines of communications or even Starfleet or Starship systems. Uh, sensor operations? I Not mm. quite. So probably not. Else. That's fair. Well, you've activated her. Feel free to give her a talent, a focus if you wish. But we can deal with that later. Okay. Uh, boom. Okay. Uh, that is one success. And the ship rolled. Uh, you needed to roll. Roll me one more d20. As the. You're the you're primary. Oh, was I the. So. Yep. I didn't know I was the primary. My bad. Sorry. My bad. I will communicate better. Yep. So roll me one more. Currently you're at two. Control. Control. Engineering. Mm -hmm. No focus. And, then I'll just ro and roll one more, right? One more. Correct. Uh, no success there. Oh, well, that's still two successes, so two momentum. 
uh, a Breen pops up on the screen. This is Thought. Ah, this is Thought Brack. Identify yourself and why you're in Breen-controlled space. Oh, hi there. This is uh, Captain Sengro of the USS. I apologize that I wasn't necessarily aware that we made our way into Breen space. Our sensors did take a little bit of damage, and since we are running exercises out here in the uh, Lasai expanse of scientific research, uh, we must seem to have been able to, unfortunately, like misplace our surroundings and our bearings. If you can get me in touch with, uh, what was his name again? What was his name again? And out of care, um, uh, in character, I'm kind of looking uh, along to the bridge and I'm thinking to myself, uh, I didn't write it down in my notes. Whatever that random Breen's name was, um, that we were able to intercept communications with in the beginning. Oh, my, Michael Jensen? Came... <laughs> in the first episode? Oh, the first episode. Oh, I've long since lost that name. Uh, let's call him, uh, Thought Trays. Let's, let's call them Thought Trays. Well, if you could, uh, if you could find a way to send a message to, uh, Thought Trays, you can understand that, uh, sir, uh, we'll be able to get the situation sorted out pretty quickly. Turn your ship around, Captain. Vacate brain space. We are dealing with a dangerous Borg artifact here and would prefer that we'd Starfleet not show up, scan everything, and potentially cause another assimilation event. Oh, that's the last thing that we would ever want to do. Believe me. But, you know, before I turn my ship around, I can't necessarily quite do that because, like I said, it seems like our navigation systems and our sensors are damaged. So... If you would, I understand it might be a trying situation. We don't mean to interfere, but if you have the ability to be patient with me, as soon as we get these repairs underway, I'll be sure to be out of your hair in quite some time. In any case, um, let me see if I could uh, send you over some things that may exactly help your help your situation, since we are no stranger to the board. But in that case, um, I'm gonna tap the rest of the bridge, and I'm gonna see if I could send over unclassified documents, general things that the brain would probably know about the Borg already, mm -hmm. but I'd also see, like to see if I could grab that uh, very old um, command code, and before I send it over, I'd like to see, uh, with combination with current Cerberus intelligence, mm -hmm. uh, if it needs to be altered uh, before I could kind of get that acceptance. Okay. Um, so run it by so the command code to override brain systems is that what you're looking for that's exactly that's what i'm looking for ah uh, yes i remember that one you are welcome to try so let's run a hmm, good question so let's roll a presence plus command to even get him to at least continue talking to you uh this is going to be a difficulty three and i'm going to spend some threat to increase the threat range 18 to 20 all right then I'll go ahead and spend a momentum in this case. Okay. And I'll say either my undercover operations focus would apply here, or pattern recognition. Uh, pattern rec could work, yes. Since this is something that we've done before, mm -hmm. and in this case we just want to modify it, if necessary. Ooh, all right. That is three successes. Check that fit. Oh, that is a complication. That is an 18 rolled. <clears throat> so, um, you are able to... Let's see. How will this work? Captain, I understand the Starfleet's desire to be helpful in every situation possible, especially when there's Borg tech. After all, your government f pretty much forbids you from working on it, and had you destroy most of it while we t of the Breen and Zinkethi and our allies have not had such moral... Mm, what's the word I'm looking for? Moral obligations to such technology. However... I will be pleased to accept it. And by the way, if your navigation is so lost, perhaps your other, your uh, sister ship at Grid 245 could assist you in leaving the sector. So in other words, oh, yeah, the uh, Plesh Trawl has 
circled around a little bit and have found the USS Lunette. Oh I boy. Have, well, first officer, Mashir. I, <laughs> I turn off, uh, I mute the hailing frequency to this green vessel. I'm gonna go comms into the Lunette. Okay. So, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Absolutely, Captain. That's great. I'm so glad we're on the same page. In this case, I'd like an operational distraction, as you were. Give off some sort of a mission where you feel like it may be necessary and prudent of the brain to well, make sure that leaving this sector is not necessarily in your best interest. That That's not me telling you to actually fire upon them. That's me saying that I'd actually like you to come up with some operational advantage in this case. Perhaps your shields are, your sensors are still damaged, and we are here to assist you. Well, I mean that's a that's a that's a good thing. We can make it. We can make that work out. Why don't you uh, inch closer and uh, give us a helping hand? Absolutely. I mean, the the captain literally said this other ship should help you on your way, so... Exactly. Okay, um, move the lunette to the location that you'd like her to be, please. So, I'm just going to advise that if we move any closer, we sort of lose the optimal range for torpedoes, so... I mean, we can get three hexes closer and any more, and we... Might as well fire phasers. Works for me. We'll move three axes closer and face towards the uh, raider. Okay. So about there. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So uh, the ships are distracted. Let's. S Okay, so you're now going to attempt to hack their systems, correct? That's the plan. Okay, so I'm going to run this uh, fairly similar to signals jamming. Uh, this was going to be a control plus engineering task, assisted by the communications plus security. Um, and you, uh, in this case, because you are, are attempting to hack an alien system, I will choose the difficulty. And because it's an older code and it's an enemy ship um i'm going to set the difficulty to th to a three you said control security uh control engineering and engineering. assisted by communications plus security of the ship so while um the, while the lunette is actually making this action um I'm forgetting my start. I should have that a bit. Um, every action is actually... How much time would that take? Um, every action... It's a little more loosey-goosey in Star Trek than it is in, say, Dungeons & Dragons. Um, and you're not actually in combat yet. Um, so I will say that this is going to take maybe five minutes at max. Okay, then. Well, while that's actually taking place... And we're attempting to hack their systems, and the Lunette, you know, not, they're not, they haven't actually entered, um, you know, outside of optimal torpedo range yet. I'd actually like to calculate a course um, and system directly to uh, the disturbance, if necessary, okay. just punch these engines. So to the, the gravity well that's being generated by the Borg station? That's right. Okay, uh, this is going to be a task for the Helms officer. If necessary. Um, what my plan here is, is that we're not going to abandon the lunette, but I still want to exact, I want, still want to examine what's on the station. So okay. I'd want to do a near, I'd, I want to do a near warp transport. Accidentally jump through warp, say it's an accident. Uh, don't abandon the lunette, but, uh, be able to do that really quickly and then come back. Interesting. All over it. All over it, Captain. Okay. Um, this is, so because this is being planned... 
this will be a control plus con. Uh, sorry, let's do this one at a time. Uh, let's do the signal jamming or the hacking first. Uh, just so that we we know the value. Just so that as a GM, I know that number's on the table. And then we will deal with the uh, course jump. And who's doing the hacking? Um, well, whoever wants to, really. That's a control plus engineering task. Um, and you do have a Our couple... engineer, perhaps? Yeah, the binars. En engineer could do it. Binars in the science data lab are probably pr more proficient at it, but that's up to you guys. Why don't we let the uh, binars do it? All right. If someone could pull up the 0, 1, and 1, 1 sheet, please. I'm ready. Zero one one zero. Okay. Yeah, uh, you can add to them too because they've been used quite a bit and haven't been upgraded, and they did true. do specialize in hacking. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so, I'll add that. Uh, control plus engineering, please, from the binars, and whoever's rolling ship, that would be communication security. All right, I got the ship. Okay, control engineering. Um, it, are they the main? Are they the main roller? Uh, yeah, binars are the main roller. Okay, two D twenty. Use use momentum too. Oh, so three D three D twenty then. Sure, and I believe Ensign, uh, the Captain Crawford's player has surprisingly graced us with her presence, huh? or his presence. Howdy, Captain. Okay. Hiya. Uh, I added um, hacking as a focus. So can I say applicable that, focus? That works for me. Okay. Ooh. Oh God. That's not good, I'm afraid. Uh, hopefully, the, maybe the ship can assist. Maybe you'll get a critical. Ship got two. Ship got... Oh, ship did get two. Oh, I see that now. Cool. That is enough. Um, you effectively have hacked the Breen's computer system, but you'll only have a couple actions to pull off before they realize it and could potentially backtrack it. Captain, are you going to let me know about your crazy jump? Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Okay. I mean, since we have the five minutes to spare within uh, mm -hmm. this uh, this period of time, I'll definitely comms the Lunetta and let them know exactly what the plan is. If there's uh, any uh, personnel that you feel like would be best spared to make this near-warp transport that you want, then they should beam over. Okay. We can do it under the pretense of, you know, actually fixing engines. I was going to say, I think I like my crew where they're at right now, because they know the ship better than we. Then that's completely within their purview. But otherwise, we're going to get pre ready and prepped within this away mission within uh, this period of time. Uh, if we're, if you're like a lot of people to beam over, uh, Demos would offer to beam over. I mean, if it feels like uh, that your presence isn't necessarily detrimental to the success of the Lunette, then by all means, beam over. Other than that, though, I mean, the plan changed pretty quick. I'm assuming you guys are also communicating this over encrypted frequencies? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Because what, yeah. What's the range on telepathy? <laughs> <laughs> ah! Tight beam. Hmm. So I'm beam assuming that is... Over. Just to make the statement, I'm pretty sure when you go to the Borg station, they're going to start shooting at us. So I figured that we, we're pretty much going to have to have shields and the torpedoes are ready to go and go from there. We have to, we're going to have to fight these people anyway. Which is... And if we leave the sector by accident, I'm truly sorry. It was Jefferson's fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we leave, what do we want that hack to do? In case we do jump out of system. Good question. Or are we just going to deploy the hack at the uh, as it as is necessary and determine its effects afterwards? I would say almost like a, a phantom nighthawk, one that just sits in place while we warp in and warp out. Oh, like to like make it look that we've never left. So you want to do a something similar to the Picard maneuver, where the Nighthawk, except the Nighthawk does not appear anywhere else. 
That's a yeah, bold another great idea that I didn't come up with, which is why I delegated I was, it to my staff. I was thinking shields and weapons go into a diagnostic mode for 20 minutes or longer. <laughs> shields and weapons in a diagnostic mode. That, that sounds good. Yeah. That way, if we need to shoot at them, we can shoot without them having, without them <laughs> shooting back for a few for a round or two at least. That'd be an interesting idea. Okay, so um, let's. So you're doing the warp jump. Let's do the warp jump. Um, uh, that, um, assuming that's what you're doing. In which case, I would like a control con from Mr. Uh, Erkin or Mr. Yeah, Mr. Erkin, and the ship can assist with uh, engines plus con. This will be uh, because you're doing a warp jump within a system and all these little bits and pieces of debris floating around, not to mention a gravity well. I should probably lower that. This is going to be a difficulty of four. And keep in mind, it's you do also have to worth. Yep, sorry. Oh, sorry. It's also worth noting that uh, because we are in pseudo starship combat, that in order to move in warp, you have to spend power equal to the number of zones. Mm -hmm. So for you to just get to Borg Station, it's two zones, so that's two power. To get immediately back, that's four power. And you guys haven't recovered power yet from your... Um, that was lost. So Nighthawk will have some power left, but not lots. Yeah, we're down to nine now. We'd be down to, what, five after that? Yep. Yep. I can always squeeze more power out, but then that would add complications. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's worth a shot myself. I like our crazy plans. And as long as Jefferson's not rolling, I believe. Okay. Okay, uh, Alec? Yes. I'm going to use my bold talent. Okay, so you're going to buy... Um, that only comes in if you buy dice with uh, threat. Which I'm going to. Okay. And how much? Th how many dice are you going to buy? Uh, I'll I'll buy two dice for... Uh, three three threat. Two dice for three threat? Yep. Uh, I'll do one dice for one threat. Okay. And I'm, I'd like, just in case people forget, because I know Nighthawk crew is still new to the whole thought, there is your determination. You can spend determination to get one dice that automatically rolls a one. I'm down for that. So yeah, okay. And then if you want that fourth, you so that counts as your third die. So if you want another die on top of that, that will count two threat or cost two threat. Uh, you could use the momentum. Yeah, then his bullet yeah, will spend a moment. Oh, yeah. true, true. So at the moment that's four dice rolling or five um if you're buying uh, if you so you have the two dice is normal you have the third yep. die that you buy with your determination yep. and if you wish to spend two threat you'll get a fourth dice so uh, roll th roll okay. three and just yeah. imagine there was that the fourth g roll three dice and add two more successes on top of the results Uh, I am praying the hell of the prophets right now. Okay. <laughs> prophets, take the wheel. Don't worry about it, dude. That's, yes. That is five successes. And um, what is the ship? Uh, the ship is... I had it up. Uh, that will be Wait. engines plus that, con. Yeah. That's six successes. Uh, the, six, the yes, my bad. We get two. Yeah. So you have six successes. Uh, you didn't spend momentum on that, so I don't know why you're spending momentum. Unless you meant to spend momentum. Uh, I'm, I meant to. I forgot. Sorry. Ah. Okay, so that's a grand total of seven successes. Uh, so that is a gr so you get three more momentum from that. Uh, Lieutenant um, Alec, whether or not you choose to tell anyone about this is uh, completely up to you. However, there is a brief second that you see nothing but white, and this, like, just in the span of it, of an eye blink. You blink your eyes, and instead of blackness, there's bright white, and as soon as you reopen them, you have performed your 
you know, you've executed the maneuver perfectly. I will unabashedly jump up out of my seat and throw my arms straight into the air. <laughs> yes! Did anyone else see that? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah! This guy right here. And then, like, acknowledge what he just did and sit down back in his chair and be like, good captain. <laughs> okay. So you are... Actual Nighthawk is here. Holographic Nighthawk still here. Or after image. Assuming you that's what you're telling the hack to do. What? Uh, I'm, yes, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess... So that is one action from the hack. I will give you one more action from said hack before they understand what the heck is going on. Okay, you are now at the Borg station. Um, scanning it will be um, Insight plus Science or Insight plus Engineering, depending on which one you want, what type of information you want. And then the ship can assist with Sensor Science or Sensors Engineering. But it has to match whichever the primary character is rolling. I'll delegate that to the rest of my staff here. What, what do you guys actually want to look for? All right. Well, I'll go say we're going to look for engineering information. So okay. uh, let's, go, let's go do that. Okay. Uh, difficulty of two. So I'll go ahead and uh, roll that to Sharon. Mm-hmm. Uh, ship got one. Yep, ship got one. Um, Thashran? Oh, so is that me? Yeah, but it's the sensors. Um, the sensors already rolled, but someone needs to roll pri the actual check. Uh, Captain asked for engineering information, which would be your up your alley. Makes sense. Yep. Uh, control uh, plus engineering? Uh, insight plus engineering, please. Well, there's your uh, two. That's the two successes you need. Uh, what you so this Borg station is a Borg refinery. Uh, what it does is it, uh, while activated, it emits a rather strong gravity well and pulls debris in close to it. Um, inside it is a refining, uh, a built-in refining station. <clears throat> The, um, yeah, sorry, lost train of thought. Um, there's no Borg life signs on board. Uh, the station itself appears to have been activated fairly recently, given its general dilapidated state. Um, uh, definitely not the, well, uh, structurally it hasn't changed since the time, uh, about a month ago, you, you guys, or the, uh, lunette came by. Um, you can tell that there, it is wired head to toe with Breen uh, portable power devices, and you, yep, yeah, there are no, there are no Borg life signs. There's actually no Breen life signs on board either. Okay, so there's no life signs, but there's a bunch of portable power devices set up here. Mm-hmm. Okay then. Well. Almost changes things. I almost don't want to beam down there. But we're going to do so anyway. Uh, so Deimos is on board at this point, correct? Deimos is on board, yep. All right, then. Well, we're going to quickly assemble uh, this away team. Okay. Uh, fully kitted out. Uh, transporter enhancers, if necessary, in case the power uh, converters or the power supplies interfere with trans and uh, Type-C phaser rifles. Fair enough, okay. In this case, I'm actually going to leave uh, Platoon Commander Helsing uh, on board, since Bashir is off on the lunette, so he's going to be in command. Understood. Right. Okay. Right, so we're going to... Go ahead. Uh, nope, nope. Keep talking. I'm just okay. looking for what I need to do here. All right, then. So we're taking Deimos. I'm going down as captain. Uh, we are going to also take... Uh, Shras, uh, very important. We are dealing with a bunch of Borg, so our chief engineer is required. Mm -hmm. And we're also gonna take our new doctor. Ooh, fun. Okay. Oh boy. I knew this excitement was gonna be exciting. 
but I'm going to keep it small and light because I want everybody else here to be able to assist okay. uh, on, on the bridge of the night. Um, very well. Let's do that. Let's do this here. Sorry, I'm just getting tokens in place. I will be sh with you shortly. I don't want to put a damper on things, yeah. but uh, they will detect it, you. it is coming up on the three-hour yeah. mark. It is indeed. Um, I was hoping to have the story about done, but you guys are almost there. So should hopefully another half hour unless things actually start shooting. Okay. Oh. Okay. So let's get you guys over here. In fact, um, the fact that we've gone this far in three hours, I'm actually calling this a success in store, moving the story along. Hooray. Our okay. wrenches aren't working. Something along, something like that, yes. Um, there, that's the background I need. Yoink. Okay, so let me run this. We are talking about... Characters here. I'm just going to move you over to the Borg map. And then we were talking about characters. All right, Nighthawk. So you're leading. And then it was the Shran and Demos was, and it was Koax, correct? That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Oh. Let's actually move you guys to the right spot. There we go. Okay. So, uh, give me a split second to plug in my headset because apparently it's about to die. Those are always fun reminders. Beep. Okay, I'm back and. Okay. You beam on board the uh, Borg station. The structure. Am I? Oh there. no. Yeah. Better. Hello, hello. Yeah, You're better. good. Okay, stable. Cool. Um, you beam on to the Borg station. Um, it is designed, as most Borg stations are, to be gen generally claustrophobic. Um, but there's an obvious command platform um, overlooking the roiling of um, uh, energy conduits and gears and chemical reactions and small miniature explosions as well as sm large pools of uh, melting uh, melting metal and other rock there's no Borg or there's no one on board the station uh, you do see that the uh, Breen power cells have been wired uh, to sh uh, the Shran's actually the Shran you would respect this because they have done a slapdash job, but they have done it well. Oh, it looks pretty good, actually. All right, then. So, is there anything else, or can we start uh, moving through it? Through uh, it? You, that's that's all you see. Okay, then. Well, if we could uh, pull our tricarders out to see if we could uh, scan for any sort of other abnormalities or hidden uh, or possibly cloaked devices or, or personnel. Okay. I mean, we say there's no life signs here, but now we're on board. We got to make sure. Naturally. Uh, this will be an insight security test um, from the, obviously, probably the chief. Uh, the chief of secure or the temporary chief of security. Well, not chief. The security representative uh, can be assisted by any by one of you whichever whoever wants to roll insight security um, so if you have anything along the lines of um, communications or uh, tactical systems or even infiltration or counter infiltration something like that would work for focus uh, have, um, I have hazard awareness I'll let that one work yeah I got I'll investigation Ooh, investigation would actually be good too. Uh, so what's the roll again? Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of two. Uh, insight Ooh. security. Insight security with the focus. Hmm. 
that is the nice. two you need. Um, uh, I can assist, or is that? Yep, you can, one, two, yep you can assist. Yep. So insight security, or yeah, insight security for you, um, the Shran. Ooh, two more. All right. So you get two more momentum. Wow. So, um, what is interesting here is that all of the power assist, the power batteries, um, have a fairly low battery life. So only maybe three or four days before they run out of juice, and none of the internal systems that actually do anything are powered. Only things such as the gravity well, um, a few rudimentary point defense systems on the exterior of the station, um, the mining is, or the automated systems are activated only to run at maybe one-tenth power. Um, basically, it looks like the station was set up just to look more alive than it actually is. Like bait? <laughs> I am not saying neither here nor there. <laughs> Just voicing my thoughts. <laughs> okay, then. well... If there's nothing else that's coming out, and there's nothing um, on scans that are protruding, making it like an, an object of importance or a uh, place of interest, rather, um, I'll probably call them back into the Nighthawk, depending on wherever they are at this point. Okay. To see what the status is. Okay, I just need to look up. That's under security. Yeah, track to read. There we go. Uh, let's see. So, uh, Helsing, you are currently in command of the Nighthawk. You get the uh, hell from the captain. Uh, sir. There's nothing here. I hope I haven't been duped, but if that's the case, then you have to... I You have my permission to engage. Well, that's right. pretty... Um, rough, right as the communication hits... Uh, we're going to see what the Dreadnought is going to do in action. Um, and I have to cut back to the other map so I can actually do that action. <clears throat> uh, let's see, structure security, difficulty of two. Uh, so the ship's tractor beam, or the uh, USS Nighthawk, is momentarily caught in a sh uh, the res the Resreth Dreadnought's tractor beam. Uh, however, um, due to the c complication that she just rolled, uh, it just so happens that she snags a passing asteroid that instead of the ship, and at which point. Uh, we she begins arming weapons, uh, sends a c unencrypted communication to the raider that <clears throat> uh, something along the lines of they've discovered it, engage. And we are going to enter combat proper. And we're going to try to make this as quick as possible. Right. Okay. In that case, I would suggest that the Lunette goes first. That would be... Yep, considering that the Nighthawk is busy doing stuff with the Borg station and has left the Lunette as the focal point, I would suggest that it would be the Lunette. And at this point, um, the Captain's player has made an unexpected appearance, uh, so he will be fly playing um, Mud on Helm. That's okay, we don't need to fly anywhere. But thank you for being here. Um, Correct. So what we would have been doing this entire time is just sort of subtly getting a target lock and preparing a volley of quantum torpedoes to go. And uh, I'm going to use my intelligence officer ability to create the advantage that I know their shield frequency. So 
Uh, either I think it's fair to say that this attack will have piercing two rather than just straight damage to their hull, but that's mm -hmm. entirely up to you. That strikes me as a fairly uh, tactical advantage. Excellent. Well, as I said, it is a salvo of torpedoes, so take three threat. I will do so. Uh, I'm going to be the one doing the firing because I believe I have the highest security since Deimos yeah. is not here at the moment. Uh, it is a difficulty three because mm -hmm. it is a, a torpedo launch. Uh, so if someone can get the lunettes, uh, weapons, and security for me, please. I'm going to be spending uh, three momentum here for four dice. I'll do. I'll do the ship, weapon, security. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, that might be an issue. Well, we need this. We need the ship here to crit. Is what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I got to spend my determination. Nope. All right. So that's not a crit, which means I have to spend my determination. Okay. Uh, my value that I'm going to tap is that uh, do no harm only applies in sick bay. So I will be rerolling those three. That works. <laughs> Much, much Ooh, better. Much better. So that is a grand total of five. five, which means we get two momentum back. Mm -hmm. uh, now that is important uh, because with a salvo, I get to roll nine challenge die. Yes, you do. Well, uh, what we're going to do with this is because we have piercing two, that's mm -hmm. six resistance gone. Um, with Vicious 1, that brings it up to a total of 13. I'm going to spend the two momentum we just got on a devastating attack. Okay. And then if there's any resistance remaining, I will spend uh, momentum on penetration. Uh, let's see. So total piercing right now was 6. Is that accurate? Yep. Yep. Uh, that happens to be their scale, and they do not have extra armor. So, yeah, that is all that you need. All right, so my question is, because of devastating attack, high yield, etc., mm -hmm. um, how much shield did it have? It had, and I had just closed off the character sheet because I am a bad GM. I believe it had about 15 shield. All right, in that case, we're going to dump the remaining momentum because... Uh, what that's going to mean, uh, and I, I hate to do this to you, but it is a good lesson in why you never let them fire quantums. <laughs> um, what happens is, so we've done more than five damage. That's one breach. With high yield, that's two that's breaches. Two. Yep. We've taken out their shields, so that's another breach, which thanks to high yield, four breaches. I've done a devastating attack, which does a breach because the shields are down. That's six breaches, and unless you're using full starship rules for the Breen, that ship just got blown up to smithereens. I'm pretty much going to say that she go bye-bye now. And uh, Aria <laughs> just sort of pushes the button, watches her handiwork, stands up and says, my work here is done. I'll be in sickbay. <clears throat> I calm the Nighthawk and go, Lieutenant Commander Helsing, You broke up. Lieutenant Commander Helsing, your turn. <laughs> so that ship just <laughs> got destroyed. Kaboom. Okay. Um, Kaboom! <laughs> so next up is going to be the Plesh Troll. Just because. I mean, it was. Oh, not... it was the Dreadnought that went boom. Uh huh. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yes, it was. See that? De see that debris field? Yeah, there's more debris there now. <clears throat> I mean, so oh, the this works well. The plush troll is going to attempt uh, to attempt to fight back because that's how they have orders. I am going to spend some threat because you've given me some. To mm -hmm. add an extra crew dice. Yeah, I think they hit us. Yeah, that would be a good solid hit on that. They are going to do a... Uh, let's see, that is with... That's in medium range, so obviously torpedo's not going to be a thing. So it is just going to be a Polaron hit. 
Actually, I'd prefer the torpedoes because Polarons really hurt. Yeah, I know. I know you would. But uh, where did their sheet log go? Minimize, minimize. Green here. <clears throat> Uh, nope, cancel that. Pop that out, roll this. And that is that much. Roll seven, challenge dice. Okay, so... <clears throat> that is a grand total of eight, and it is piercing two. Yeah, which means our resistance is completely gone, which means we take eight, which means it's a breach. Yep. And I have... I would have let you roll the uh, breach, or the system hit, if you had, uh, you know, actually left a ship intact. But you didn't, so that oh is a system hit to structure. And if I have my rules out ready, I would... Basically, you have to roll a challenge die. If you roll an effect, it means a named NPC or PC is hit, and how you determine that is up to you as the GM. Okay, so roll one challenge dice. So that... All right, we're good. Yeah, you guys are fine. Uh, the ship rocks as a Polaron beam strikes its uh, ventrals, uh, its little ventral wing, and now it is going to be the Nighthawk's turn. All right, I am a newbie to spaceship combat. That so... is fine. So oh. uh, you currently have long... Let's see, how many hexes is that? Actually, that's extreme range if I'm counting right. Yeah, Yeah, that's extreme range at the moment. So how far can we move in one turn and still be able to shoot? Uh, so what would happen is you would have to have a Helm Officer... Uh, do an impulse action to get you within to change zones and I believe that is a difficulty of zero task and then the next go around you'd be able to shoot All right, Unless... have quick... uh, or you could spend momentum to keep the adv to keep your uh, keep the uh, initiative in which case then you can do two actions well as he said would... he has quick to action so uh, right that yeah. would work so that so the idea is um Alec will do the the maneuver, get us in range, quick to action, and um, uh, who is it, Lorelai? The other security person. Oh yeah, Lorelai. I, I take over. yeah, expli. Should have to take over that, and then we'll launch the torpedoes. Okay. So to help you out here, um, you are trying to fire torpedoes. Roger. Yeah, so that costs... So to fire a torpedo, you have to give me threat. Not a problem. Okay, that is fair. So the reason oh. I say that is you only really want to move two hexes, and that's just a maneuver. Uh, the important distinction there is that that is not uh, requiring any power. Oh, perfect. Okay. Uh, and so also... Oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so move the Nighthawk to within the your two hexes cool thank you okay and then you get to and move. torpedoes and... cost they don't cost any power correct correct well first you want to do the helm task because that could give you momentum right. which would uh be good uh ensign go yeah or... ensign oh lieutenant lieutenant <clears throat> i'm sorry i used to <laughs> jefferson being up there <laughs> oh yeah Okay, it's a uh, common mistake. Yep. So that would be a control plus con. Uh, okay. And ship can assist with engines plus con. Difficulty zero. I'm using my helm operations focus. Mm -hmm. two, two successes. Excellent. So that's two momentum already. Uh, who, who's rolling ship? Ship rolls one. So, yep. Three. three momentum. And now you get to fire torpedoes. All right, so for torpedoes, um, you have the option of firing just one torpedo, or you can fire a salvo. Now, the salvo, actually, I take that back. It would have been eight breaches, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, um, if, you, uh, if you fire a salvo, you roll one additional challenge die, 
and you automatically acquire the spread effect, which does half the damage rounding up. So what kind of torpedoes do you have? Do you have photons? Do you have quantums? Photons. Okay, so they're not as good as quantums, but you can very easily alpha strike this as well. But it would require a salvo. Okay. Now, the caveat to that is a normal torpedo is one threat. A salvo is three threat. I take difficult. Gotta go for it. Yeah. Give him the threat. Okay. <clears throat> cool. Okay, and then... So, anybody want to roll for... Uh... The ship? Yeah, I can so, handle the... Control security, and this is uh, weapons, and the ship will assist with... Uh, ship will assist with weapon security, and I believe torpedoes are a difficulty three. You got it. <clears throat> See, I'm learning. Learn by doing. And Loxley will use uh, one of the momentum for another die. Okay. Sadly, she does not have a focus. Well, we've used her a couple times. Yeah. Maybe we can give her one this time. I, so yeah. we'll give her um, shipboard tactical. That works. Ooh, there's the... So, uh, yep, so she gets it. And ship assist. Who's rolling ship? I can. Uh, what is what was ship again? Uh, ship is weapon security. Weapons. Ship security. Mm-hmm. Uh, focus. Always yes. has a focus. Yeah, ship always has focus. Oh. Okay, that's one more momentum for you guys. And you get to roll challenge dice plus uh, one additional challenge dice. Correct. Yep. Will, yep. So whatever is on for the ship's uh, torpedo damage, roll that plus one additional challenge dice. Just realize I don't have the dealy bop set up. It doesn't have the torpedo damage. I have. To, I'll have to do it off the sheet. It's five. Oh. It looks like. Uh yeah. Oh, you already did it. Oh. Okay. Uh, there is the macro for there's the challenge dice macro uh, that you could roll as well if need be but that works too okay so uh, uh, what I would recommend doing is spending the two momentum you just got on penetration because then that's six check. damage yeah okay so six damage um I'm still missing one challenge dice from that because um, you should be rolling six for a torpedo salvo. So I can do that. Yeah, just, just yeah. One, go ahead. One challenge dice, please. Nada. Okay. And so that causes a breach, and because it has high yield, I believe that means it gets two breaches. Correct. And it's important to know how much shield it has because yeah. it gets spread. Uh, it does three more damage, which if that ticks over to shield, does everything we needed to do. Okay, so that plush troll has a grant. It started with 12 shields, uh, so it lost six, six from the dice, three more from the spread, and it has three left. Mm-hmm. And uh, two breaches. So, um, because Commander Helsing rolled the damage, um, if you go to the macros page, you should see one there called System Hit. Alrighty. And if you could roll that twice for me, please. System Techno Babble Challenge Die System Hit. Roll yep. twice. Yes, please. Whew. Two sensors. Okay. I don't actually know what that does. I haven't read sensor damage. Let's quickly get there. Uh, I would recommend yeah. using a chart on 230 for this one rather than do full uh, full rules for them. Yeah, fair enough. 230. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Um, is that what that means? Increased difficulty of all power. Tasks. Yeah, it loses yeah. two power and it is... Uh, difficulty of uh, all tasks goes up. That's fair. Works for me. Okay. Cool. Uh, it has suffered several uh, hits to its sensors, which is really going to impact it in the combat field. 
So, um, I believe it would now be the, uh, let's see, it would have been, it would be the debris' turn, but the debris is gone. So, Lunette. Debris can, debris can shift. <laughs> yeah. Uh, does anyone on the Lunette want to make a monologue, or can I? If you go want to make it. a monologue, go for it. All right. So as I'm walking back to sick bay, very nonchalantly, I just sort of hold up a pad and open communication frequencies to the plush trawl. Mm -hmm. Do they answer? They seem um, a little more interested in talking. So yes, they do answer. I say, my name is uh, not important. What I want to know is what you were doing here and why you decided to... I don't know. Lure us out here. Um, there is a response back from a fa uh, faceless or a generic Breen helmet who does not identify himself. We do. We did our duty to the Typhon Pact. Many were lost. However, our duty is done. All right. I'm going to give you two options here. Either you can come quietly and you can come back with us to Cerberus Station where you will be held as uh, lawful prisoners of the United Federation of Planets, or we can keep shooting your vessel. Now, let's be clear here. Next time, I'm not going to use as many torpedoes. Your vessel is pathetic. So please do us all a favor and surrender. Um, so on the bridge, um, the uh, Commander Bashir, you're at science, correct? <clears throat> I was assuming uh, oh. the captain's chair. Oh, right, but, captain's yeah. chair. Either or. Um, there is... I'm going to spend... A bu so what I'm going to do is I am going to dump all the threat you gave me to spend a scene reversal. Basically means I get to end the scene how I like. So long as I don't injure any of you, which is perfectly acceptable. Um, what is going to happen here? Ah! As soon as I get the stream back, stream window back, so I can show this properly. So what is going to happen is there is going to be a ship that decloaks. It is going to launch a devastating barrage of weapon fire at the Plesh Trawl, destroying it before it engages cloak again. And warps out of the system. Oh my. And on that note, I am going to bring the session to a close. What type of ship was it that decloaked? <clears throat> that would have been a Zen Kathy ship. Roger. So. I'm bringing, uh, so part one is comp of the crossover is completed. You have done as the GM has intended, and oh, only about a half hour over the GM's allotted time limit, so that's actually rather well by my standards. Uh, so I'd like to thank everyone for attending, and a special shout out to the Cerberus folks who could come in on a Thursday, who uh, is not their regular scheduled programming. Yay! Yeah. Um, next Friday, so Friday, September the 6th, there will be the Cerberus half of this crossover, where we will see precisely why these ships came out this far, for what appears to be nothing. So on behalf of myself and my players, I thank everyone for tuning in, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye. Yep.